are, my friends. One of the last live shows of the first month of 2011. We've got a jam-packed transmission lined up for you. Obviously, uh, the protest exploding all over the Middle East and North Africa are intensifying all over Egypt. The New York Times is now reporting uh, that in Alexandria uh, and also uh, in Cairo, the police are stopping their clashes with the citizens and shaking hands with them and sharing bottled water. That's what happened in 89 with Ceausescu uh, in Romania. And so uh, more and more it looks like Egypt is going to fall uh, to the population. Uh, they, the Egyptian government is arresting basically the entire leadership of the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, Hazi Mubarak is a dictator. Joe Biden is running around sticking his finger in everybody's face saying, don't call him a dictator. Just like we heard last week, don't call Hu Jintao a dictator. They are dictators. And even the Sydney Morning Herald gets it right when they says the U.S. sticks to its old playbook of trying to prop up dictators. Now, I've seen some people saying that the West, uh, and last week, you know, we looked at that with some guests on air, uh, that the West is somehow financing that. There is no evidence of this. Tunisia, Yemen, uh, and Egypt are all Western puppet states with dictatorships basically over them. And the population, you know, in a way, the globalists are causing this because in the last year, uh, as the dollar's been devalued, causing world commodity prices in fuel and ma mainly food to go up, uh, you've got 50-plus uh, percent of the Egyptian population making $2 a day or less. About half the population is on some form of food stamps, just like 43 million Americans are on food stamps. Now, they're on the equivalent of food stamps. They go to these government facilities and are given food, uh, and they're starving. I mean, you look at these rioters, they are very skinny. I mean, they've, they look uh, malnourished. They're, you know, their cheeks are sucked in. And, boy, a hungry stomach makes an angry person. People are so depressed over not being able to feed their children, they're setting themselves on fire, as you know, in the last three days. That's desperation right there. Uh, just like uh, we had uh, the Romanian parliament... Uh, one of the uh, TV producers there for government TV throwing himself off the balcony and almost killing himself, saying, you've sold our country out, you've sold our children out, and he jumped off a three-story balcony head first, trying to kill himself. This isn't just something that Muslims do or Buddhists do. Humans do this when they get desperate. And uh, it's the IMF and the World Bank are saying, cut all of your budgets, everything must go to us on interest on your debt. And these countries, some of them are paying over 20%, interest on made-up fiat currency owed to the bankers because the bankers sold them on investing in derivatives. This all started 12 years ago in 1999. And it's going to suck down Greece. It's going to suck down uh, Ireland. It's going to suck down Spain and, and, and Portugal and England and the United States. In fact, The Economist magazine is out today saying that, yes, the United States is actually in worse shape than uh, Greece is. Uh, with its uh, finances. And, and, and that's true. And, and the issue here is I'm all for cutting government spending because that's what gets us dependent so the bankers can hold us hostage and say, pay higher taxes, do what we say, or we'll cut off the basic uh, you know, food stamps and things that people are now dependent on. But once you're already in the situation, and, and, and once you're dealing with $1,500 trillion, and Davos, the bankers demanding another hundred trillion, they can leverage out to a quadrillion, one thousand trillion. You could cut everything. You could pay a hundred percent taxes. You could never pay all this back. It's not owed. It's made up. And that's the big secret. I hear all these conservatives on radio saying we gotta cut this, we gotta cut that. That'll do nothing. L let me explain that again. Zero. Zero. You've got to default on all this debt. We'll be right back. Very important transmission today, obviously, with what's happening all over the world. I'm going to attempt to cover all of this news that's in front of me. It, of course, is the 28th day of January 2011. 
I want to talk about the V for Victory operation we launched seven days ago last Friday. It has been the most wildly successful grassroots uh, program we've ever launched. It is just off the charts, the huge response we're seeing. I want to spend some time on that today, and we've been sent scores of new videos and flyers and activist material. We're going to be posting uh, up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com today. Obviously, a few days ago, I had Brad Meltzer uh, of Decoded, the best-selling author, on, and uh, Mark Dice did not like what they did with the episode that he was in. And I do see a lot of big globalist connections. Uh, Meltzer said that I would be pleased with the show and that he actually agreed with me at the end of the show. I have to say it was a whitewash overall and that it was a mixed bag of where they would show both sides. They would show what I had to say and all the activists in it said that, you know, they're setting up global government corruption, uh, that it's dangerous what's happening. But then they made fun of me and said that I was basically wrong about a skull and bones connection with no proof. And then the host of the show at the end say, oh, we don't think it's a bad thing. Gee, we wish we could be members and basically act like they want to be groupies, especially the woman host. Then they cut to Meltzer at the end. and He says, well, I disagree with my host. I think overall it's probably bad, but it's still a good club. But I'm surprised this made it on national TV. But it shows how the Internet and alternative media has pushed these issues out there where the establishment, 11 years after I snuck in, can't cover it up anymore. But I'm going to get Meltzer back on next week. He said he'd come on, and we'll really go over this, and I'll have time to get some clips from the show. We forgot to record it uh, up here last night. I did record it uh, at home, uh, but we've got to get that transferred over. I'm going to play a few of these clips coming up next week. Separately... Uh, obviously, we're going to be getting into the economy. Uh, Egypt on the verge of uh, the government being overthrown. Uh, we've got Wayne Madsen joining us in 22 minutes from now to give us his take. Larry Pratt joins us in the middle of the next hour, the, the head of Gun Owners of America, to talk about Obama throwing down the gauntlet yesterday and saying, yes, within two weeks, he's going to call for and try to get introduced a raft of draconian victim disarmament. And we've got our Friday visit. He wasn't with us last Friday, uh, but we've got our Friday visit coming up with Bob Chapman. In the last 30 minutes, we're going to get Lindsey Williams uh, to pop in uh, with some new developments on that front. So a jam-packed uh, broadcast, obviously, today. Uh, one other little issue that I'm going to be playing next week. Uh, I got contacted a few weeks ago by the management company for Aerosmith. Uh, and uh, I was told that... Uh, the legendary uh, guitarist Joe Perry had dedicated his new uh, solo album uh, to yours truly, Have Guitar, Will Travel is the name of the album. Downloaded it yesterday. They're mailing me a copy. Uh, excellent music, obviously. But uh, talked to uh, Joe for about an hour yesterday, and uh, he wants us to, and I'm honored to play some of it on the show, and it deals with the New World Order and obviously uh, what's in the water uh, and the whole globalist uh, program, Police State, uh, especially two tracks on the new album. So very exciting to have folks reach out from Aerosmith. Uh, almost on a weekly basis, I get contacted by big Hollywood stars, huge musicians, uh, and 99% of the time, or I'd say 98% of the time, uh, they don't want to come on air. They just privately want to say, we appreciate what you're doing. And, and the reason that's important is it shows the reach of this broadcast and that celebrities across the board are are getting out of the left-right paradigm and really waking up to the real nature of the world. That shows where popular culture is going and is another big win for liberty. But who knows in the future, you may hear uh, Joe Perry uh, and others here on the broadcast. I don't really push for folks to come on the show, uh, but uh, certainly very well-spoken guy. I talked to him for more than an hour yesterday and his wife is also great and very informed extremely informed about what's going on uh, in the world today in fact he said to me he said you know living in the world today we're living on the edge we need to get that for um, for bumper music because i in fact years ago i heard that song we, we've all heard it many times and thought oh, i ought to use that as bumper music and never never got a, around to it so let's get living on the edge and maybe maybe play a bit of that from aerosmith uh today uh, here on the broadcast. But next week, we're going to be playing some of Joe Perry's solo music. And right there in the insert, I was on iTunes looking at it, it's dedicated to uh, Alex Jones and the Sea Shepherds, 
who certainly do do a good job uh, trying to expose the killing of whales. That's a big area. I don't like killing elephants and whales and things like that. They almost extincted uh, whales uh, in the last uh, century. But uh, very, very honored that uh, that is going on. Okay, let me just... Obviously, I'm going to get into what's happening in the Middle East and North Africa uh, first here. But then I want to get into uh, this report in your face dealing with Atlanta Police Department unit investigated over public strip search, WSB TV. And the police chief admits this went on, but then buried in there, the headline shouldn't be public broad daylight strip search at a drug checkpoint, a Nazi checkpoint, a Soviet-style checkpoint, an authoritarian checkpoint. Uh, but they actually did a cavity search on the man. They actually put their hand inside of him. I, I mean, you cannot make this type of stuff up. And TSA has said in the future they may need to do cavity searches. So, you know, first it's put their hands on your genitals, through your pants, and it's in your pants. You know, it starts with take your shoes off, take your belt off, and it just gets worse and worse. Uh, so we're going to be getting in uh, to that. But buried in the article, there's the cavity search in broad daylight. And, of course, the feds are already paying nationwide grants to have police set up warrantless checkpoints and take blood without warrants. They want in our personal space. They're training police under the... Uh, Model states Health Emergency Powers Act for now nine years to forcibly inject us with vaccines. D.C. announced they'll give you a discount on your driver's license if you give them a blood test. Uh, Clinton signed that executive order. It's, it's part of executive fiat law. They never implemented it, but he signed it in 94. It's in my first film made in 97. I show the executive order. I take it to the state police and read it to them, and they promptly arrest me. And I said, look, here's the executive order that they're going to put clinics in here and take blood. They, of course, were laughing about it, but, but this is what they've been planning. This is the holy grail. And so now the police are going to pull you over and take your pants off on the side of the road in broad daylight in Atlanta. And, I mean, I'm sorry. I would resist that. I would resist somebody knocked me on the head when I was jogging and I woke up and they were trying to rape me, I'd resist. And if cops are pulling you over and trying to shove their hand in you, I mean, well, what are you supposed to do to these crazy people who think they're God? Now, we told you that this was going to happen, and the reports are now pouring in. And, of course, this is the top story up on the Drudge Report uh, today. Uh, in the last two weeks, we actually wrote multiple articles at Infowars.com. Paul Watson and Jason Douglas did. Uh, with the headlines, Homeland Security Hysteria, showing how every day we'd see as many as six, seven, eight cases where they'd shut down whole highways because of a cardboard box, where they'd uh, shut down whole factories because somebody saw somebody on a cell phone. And they're putting out these TSA videos on TV and the web showing people in a mall going, look, he's on a phone. He looks suspicious. Look, he paid for cash. He paid with cash. Call the police where they're just taking normal activity and saying it's a sign of terrorism to create this perception that it's so deadly real and that it's so dangerous when you got a better chance of running into a deer and flipping your car and dying, hundreds and hundreds die a year from that, than you do with terrorism. you got a better chance of dying from peanut allergy, a better chance of dying from a bolt of lightning. I mean, you can pull these statistics up. We've written articles with the government's own statistics showing the hundreds and hundreds of things that you have a better chance of dying from of course, the number one thing is obviously automobile accidents, 300 plus thou a year. I mean, the world's a dangerous place. It's like this woman two days ago that got a $48,000 settlement with Travis County, where I reside here in Austin, Texas. Uh, that's the county that Austin's in because she was riding in a rural area with a group of long distance bikers on the shoulder in a rural, you know, one lane road and hit a pothole on the shoulder. And is suing, and, and the county just gave her money. I mean, it's this idea that the government must keep us safe. Isaac Asimov, back in the 40s, wrote the seminal book, I, Robot, where the government develops robots whose main job is to keep us safe. But in the name of keeping us safe, they build a total tyranny where you're not even allowed to leave your house. And you're basically just plugged into the wall because that's the only way the robots can make sure you're safe. And... 
getting into a sociological situation, if you go back 3,000 years ago to the different dynasties uh, in China, this first started about 3,000 years ago, and of course they've had dynasties for 5,000, that the priest class would learn how to manipulate the royal family and say, women must have tiny feet, let us bind your feet, so they couldn't walk. Women aren't allowed to cut their fingernails. Kings aren't allowed to leave the sacred city to where they were just paralyzed uh, and conned by the servant class of the elite, and then the servant class became the elite. And that's what's happening here with this nanny state, and the globalists know exactly what they're doing. I've got to pay as a taxpayer into that $48,000 for this woman who was riding her bike, hit a pothole on the shoulder. I mean, it's a country road. There's not, there's not unlimited money here. No one's perfect. I mean, you've got to know, if you go on long-distance bike trips and you get tired... I remember one time back when I was in better shape, like 16 years ago, on a long-distance bike trek for me, long distance, like 20 miles, and I wasn't paying attention, had my head down going up a hill, and ran into a pothole, and it flipped, and I got hurt. She broke her jaw. I just skinned my elbows. Did I go sue everybody because I was going up a hill, not paying attention, you know, just looking down at the ground and hit it and flipped? I, I, I mean, do you owe me money because of that? The government can't and won't protect you. All they can do is take your rights. I got even bigger news, though, on the hysteria coming up. Again, Bob Chapman, Lindsey Williams, Larry Pratt, Wayne Madsen coming up. We're going to get into what's happening in the Middle East, in and around the Suez Canal, what the near certain fall of Egypt, now that the police are beginning to join in with the Egyptian population. When that happens, boom, it's over for the dictator, Hosni Mubarak, who for three decades, if you criticize him in any way, you're taken to a torture dungeon. I mean, they are monsters. And even the Australian news and others are calling out the U.S. saying, why are you trying to prop up a dictator again? And a lot of people are saying they believe the West is orchestrating this. I, I don't see evidence of that. Tunisia, Yemen, uh, Egypt, those are big allies with the U.S. and Israel and England. And they've got dictatorships that are U.S. funded. How many tens of billions do we give to Egypt every year? As much as we give Israel, I know that. By the way, Rand Paul's calling for cutting off aid to all of them. I agree. Yeah, here's the headline. Rand Paul, end aid to Israel and everybody else. Absolutely. End that aid now. We're bankrupt. We can't pay for it. And it makes the world hate us because we're funding all this tyranny. Now, now here's the histori uh, hysteria st uh, stories that we've been talking about. Now imagine, now at 9,000 locations, malls, 846 Walmarts, uh, it, it's going in this month and next month at 9,000 locations. Many of them already have it. This Walmart has it. Telescreens at the checkout counter saying, watch everybody look for terrorists. Don't trust your neighbors. And so they go out in the parking lot, and a guy's arguing with somebody on a cell phone. I just saw an article last week where a guy was watering his lawn, and the people thought the end of the hose was a gun. They killed him. And the police said, well, good job. You know, we better safe than sorry. Uh, I saw an article where they busted in the wrong house, and the guy had a remote control in his hand, boom, dead. And they said, well, we felt threatened to stop the drugs the government ships in to begin with to create the crisis and to offer the solution of tyranny. They keep the drugs illegal to keep the price up so their bosses uh, can make more money. But now at Walmart, and I've got other reports of this today as well, report of armed man leads to lockdown at Walmart. 44% of U.S. retail sales 42 worldwide is Walmart. These are nice little camps. Walmart admits they've been part of drills for a decade for forced inoculation centers. Uh, we were covering that in FEMA documents yesterday, how they're going to use sports stadiums, high schools, Walmarts to lock you down. And they tell the police these are civil insurrection camps. And, and Walmart is allied with the Defense Department. That's come out. So is Google. That's now coming out mainstream news. Again, we told you about that six years ago on Google. Uh, had uh, Mr. Steele, a retired CIA expert uh, in computer uh, information analysis, came on and broke that. And, boy, he got a lot of heat after that happened and said, basically, I've gotten some heat. I'm not coming back on your show when he when he let the cat out of the bag on that. Uh, but uh, a report of an armed man acting erratically in a Walmart parking lot uh, led to the store being temporarily locked down before the Kirksville police, that's in Missouri, responded and diffuse the situation with no injuries. Oh, they diffused it. 
Kind of like the city of Austin just bought a couple million dollars worth of robots. So now they're out there shutting down the highways every week, you know, defusing cardboard boxes. But they'll go ahead and blow the cardboard box up to say, well, we're not sure if it was a bomb. Or in San Diego, we got to burn this guy's house down because we think there's bombs in there. No jury, no, no, no proof, no nothing. We're just going to burn his house down because the bombs are too dangerous. It's, it's just this made up baloney to create hysteria. According to the Kirksville police chief, Jim Hughes, a passerby stopped at Kirksville police officer and said they had seen an individual acting erratically in a truck near the Walmart parking lot shortly before 2.30 p.m. The passerby believed the individual had a gun to his head. We do take these things, we don't take these things lightly, uh, Hughes said, especially nowadays. Yeah, especially nowadays they're creating all this mind control hysteria. The KPD responded to control the scene in order to lock down to the store, both to keep shoppers in and prevent the individual from entering the store. Then they went up and talked to him and found out he was having a long discussion on his cell phone. I can't tell you how many times I've had some emergency at the office come up, an alarm go off or a water you know, valve breaking or an air conditioner leaking. And my wife goes into Target or the grocery store and I just say, take the kids, honey. And I walk around for 20 minutes out front the store so I'm not bothering people inside. And, and I mean, now that's bad. I mean, we've all done that. Or I'll sit in the car. You just go on in, baby. I'll meet you in 10 minutes. All right, now back to this. Uh, you know, the alarm code is, or I get a call, we're having unusual activity on your bank debit card. You have to tell us, you know, did you buy flowers at this shop? You, you know, you're making those phone calls that you got to make, and it's evil. Because the public has become wicked on average, and the wicked fleeth when none pursueth. They're just running around in hysteria and fear, not trusting each other. Meanwhile, the big corrupt government is out of control. And here's another article from CBS News in Dallas. Dallas police officer charged with stealing from Crime Stoppers. They reportedly uh, put in $250,000, quarter million, in fake tips and paid themselves through the tip line. That's what this Stasi tattletale society is. That's the new economy, is your neighbor turning you in, and now Congress wants to give them immunity from fake tips. All over the country, police under federal grants are now running warrantless checkpoints and taking blood at them. And on top of that, uh, the Atlanta police now strip people in broad daylight and do cavity searches on the side of the highway. Uh, that is out of WSB-TV, the police admit it. So now, uh, to prove you're not with Al-Qaeda, the police with no warrant are going to do sexual assault uh, to you, basically. And the man describes it as a sexual assault. And what's our mainstream media doing? Making fun of Jesse Ventura filing a lawsuit calling it sexual assault. You know, since when do men not get our rights? You've got all these women that are sexual abuse victims freaking out, filing suits over the TSA and winning, especially in Amarillo last year when they pulled the woman's blouse off and her bra and then said, man, you're good looking. She has witnesses. That's why they settled. And then she was crying at the gate and men came and said, I wish I could be part of the search. They were so attracted to her. And I've seen her on the news. Very good looking. I mean, these are men who could never get a woman. And they don't understand it's all about loving your woman. It's all about the woman wanting you. It's all about the enjoyment of liking each other. These are goons who cannot probably ever had a woman in their life. And they're such animals. They run up to a woman who's crying and say, man, I really wish I could have been part of that search. I mean, these are animals, ladies and gentlemen. These are complete and out of control. This is what tyranny is. The government hires a bunch of idiots. The good cops quit. The good TSA people have been quitting. I'm not saying they're all like this, but it's an atmosphere that allows these type of animals to get away with this. In Ventura, I've been there when they're sticking their hand between his legs. And that's in his lawsuit. I've watched it. And let me he's he was mad. And I have seen mainstream media spin it and say it's a publicity stunt. Guess what? He's had ABC, NBC, Good Morning America all call him in Mexico. And he said, no. I'll come on your show in April. I'm done. I'm not responding. If he was wanting publicity, and he is going to come on in April uh, when he gets back for a couple of weeks. He's down in Mexico right now, doesn't even have phone. He's just got email. But, you know, again, we're the victims of this, and the media spins it like, oh, this guy in Atlanta, he should have liked the cops putting their hands inside of his body. 
All right, we're going to go to Wayne Madsen here in just a moment for the balance of the hour. Obviously, with the geopolitical ramifications of what's happening in Egypt, Tunisia, and Yemen, and what he thinks is going on behind the scenes. I'm going to give you a brief synopsis of my analysis of this. Lindsey Williams is on the last 30 minutes with Bob Chapman while he's on with us. Um, we've got, uh, of course, uh, Larry Pratt popping in with Obama, blowing the trumpet, sending up the red balloon, uh, throwing down the gauntlet, opening the drawbridge, whatever, in the floodgates, and saying, yeah, we're going to go with hardcore gun grabbing, assault weapons ban, extrajudicial banning of people owning guns, basically the no-buy list, the no, just like the no-fly list that this former chief of staff Emanuel called for, where you just magically can't buy a gun anymore because they think you're unstable. Uh, that's all coming. Uh, and they want to only let you buy one gun per purchase. Th th they've told us what they want, and now they're announcing that they're going to roll it out in the next week and a half. So that's coming up. Uh, but before we go to Wayne Madsen, I just wanted to point out to listeners uh, that we continue to upgrade and expand PrisonPlanet.tv. In April, it'll be up seven years. There are tens of thousands of pieces of media. There's every show going back seven years with a higher quality podcast. Uh, there's my book, Paul Watson's book, that are out of print. There's all these special report videos. We've been flying all over the country and the world. We've gone to Canada and other areas uh, with these special interviews that are being posted exclusively there. And uh, your support of PrisonPlanet.tv also finances much of our uh, invaluable operations. And we're running that special till the end of the week, five-plus months free right now at PrisonPlanet.tv, and we've also got the draft Ron Paul, a limited run, limited edition uh, t-shirts uh, available at InfoWars.com, and we also have a limited time. I'm only going to have these for just a few months, uh, and that's the V for Victory uh, t-shirt, which really goes back uh, to the archers over 600, 700, going back 800 years ago in England. That was their symbol to the invading Norman and French and others was they would do the V symbol of their fingers. That's actually the oldest in Europe use of it, saying we got our fingers, we've got our longbows, because the Normans, whenever they would capture the Anglo-Saxons, would cut their index and middle fingers off. So uh, I went with it because it's the V for you know, victory against Nazi occupation. It's a symbol everybody knows, victory against the globalist. It's simple, uh, but I've actually gone back and done the deep research. It comes from the archers, and that's why the British came up with it originally and then had the French adopt it as the resistance. So those T-shirts are now uh, available, and I've got more to say about this whole movement coming up later in the next hour. So again, prisonplanet.tv. You can also get a trial membership for five ninety five a month or 15 cents a day or uh, get close to half off when you sign up for a year. You get 5.3 months free when you pay for 6.7 months. In fact, Jaron just came in here and showed me the new, uh, here they are, the new draft Ron Paul shirts. Very, very handsome and your purchase also supports this broadcast and uh, everything we do here as well, getting the movement going, the self-fulfilling prophecy of getting Ron Paul to run for president. Those are available along with the V-shirts uh, as well on the online video bookstore apparel shopping cart at Infowars.com. Okay, we're going to Wayne Madsen. I just want to give you a one-minute summation of what I believe is happening here. Um, I... I am not 100% sure that Western governments aren't involved in this because we know NATO, the U.S., Israel, many others, on record, have financed revolutions all over the world. But they're almost always in countries that are run by people that aren't going under IMF World Bank control. Tunisia, Yemen, they're even having unrest uh, in Jordan. In all of these places, but in and around Egypt, uh, these are dictatorships. And you see Biden uh, uh, defending that right now, and uh, major newspapers are saying, why is the U.S. defending another dictator? The public, around half the public is on some form of food assistance. Uh, right at half the population makes $2 or less a day. You look at these rioters, these demonstrators, they're, they're very skinny. Uh, they look malnourished. They're hungry. And the IMF and World Bank have demanded in the last six months that the food allotments be cut. Imagine if the 43 million Americans on food stamps had that taken. You'd have unrest within a week or two. 
These people are starving in many cases in Egypt, in Tunisia, in Yemen, where the food allotments are being cut, especially in Tunisia uh, and uh, in, 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 in Egypt. And so no matter how you slice it, the big central banks are creating this. And on top of them ordering the food cut, the prices are up because of dollar devaluation worldwide, and food is denominated in dollars in those nations. So commodities are going up, not just oil, but also food. So I don't see why the globalists would want to do this and why they'd want to be behind it. Some people are saying there's evidence of that. Egypt has shut down the Internet. There were reports that Mubarak has fled. The police in the last three hours, the New York Times are reporting, are stopping to fight with the public and shaking hands and drinking bottled water together. The police are sharing their bottled water with them. Let's get Wayne Madsen, formerly with the National Security Agency. He's written for dozens of major newspapers and magazines. Uh, and, of course, is a routine uh, uh, analyst and expert uh, that joins us. His website's the WayneMadsonReport.com. Wayne, what's your breakdown and your take on what's happening uh, in the Middle East, North Africa? Well, I think what's happening is the same thing we've seen happen on the streets of Athens. Uh, we've, we've seen it in London. We've seen it in Ireland and Iceland. This is a reaction against uh, what, what the global bankers have done to these economies. This this is a Mediterranean issue. We've seen it play out in Italy. We've seen it play out in Greece and Spain. And why should North Africa be any different? Of course, uh, they in North Africa have these uh, long-time U.S.-supported thugs that we've uh, relied on, uh, Ben Ali in Tunisia, uh, Mubarak in Egypt, uh, and, and, and these others. Um, and I think this is paybacks. Now, I find it interesting that the WikiLeaks cables uh, talk about uh, Egypt, they've just released a bunch, I guess, in the last 24 hours. But I think uh, the people who might think that what we're going to see is like a, a liberal democracy arise where the new leaders will go off to Davos and break bread with those those hoodlums and gangsters that meet there every year are mistaken. Uh, we know that the street, Arab street is not uh, all that uh, big on these U.S. and Western-imposed dictators, and we're seeing, I think, that play out in Egypt right now. In fact, that's always been a bigger beef uh, in the Arab uh, and Central Asian nations that our governments continue to install and fund dictators from the Shah running right through to today with Mubarak. They're more angry about that than the U.S. military presence. Oh, absolutely. So, so the people, uh, you know, these commentators that are saying, oh, it's going to be wonderful. We're going to have, you know, new governments in the Arab world. They're going to be moderate. They're going to be pro-Israel. Hey, forget it. The, the, Arab, the Arab street, especially people in Egypt, know how Mubarak has brutalized those eight convoys trying to get into Gaza. They're at one with the people of that beleaguered uh, territory, and, and they're not going to be sitting down and, and inviting the head of the IMF and World Bank to Cairo uh, for, for meetings on austerity plans and and the kinds of things we So you agree with my analysis then, uh, because people I respect are, 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 are with really no evidence. Uh, I've been seeing claims uh, that, that the West is involved in this uh, and that it was WikiLeaks that triggered it, but I don't really see that. We've already been seeing unrest. I mean, this really comes down yeah. to food. Yeah, I think what we, we may have seen, there may be so, a little bit of truth in what these other folks are saying. I think there's been an attempt to co-opt the opposition in some of these countries to try to tamp it down, control the opposition, and I think that's failed. Uh, when we, we hear in Tunisia the Jasmine Revolution, now we're hearing about the Day of Rage in Egypt and in Yemen uh, uh, and in Lebanon. Uh, well, that all smacks of George Soros-funded themed revolution. But I think in this case, they've bitten off more than they can chew. We're not going to see them control these revolutions. The, the, the governments that come to power know fully well what people like George Soros and Barack Obama and George W. Bush have done to their part of the world, and they're not happy about it. We're now seeing similar statements to what we saw last year out of Davos uh, from George Soros about how he's having a wonderful uh, crisis. Now he's saying this, this, this e economic turmoil has been very good for me. Uh, he's up there gloating over it. Yeah. And I saw an Associated Press article on Monday uh, out of Davos, a uh, headline, uh, Davos calls for $100 trillion in additional credit, which means $100 trillion of taxpayer-backed 
money for them to then go loan to individuals, corporations, and countries, in some cases as high as 30% annual compounding interest. I mean, I mean, these guys are so brazen or, or chutzpah-filled, oh, yeah. I don't know what term to use, uh, uh, hubris-filled, uh, when they're just saying, give us $100 trillion more, and you know, through the classic fractional reserve banking leverage, that would then be one quadrillion or $1,000 trillion. But now through the derivatives model, it's almost unlimited. I mean, this is insane. Well, I hope these bankers in Davos are watching what's happening in the streets of Cairo, Alexandria, Tunis, Sanaa, Yemen. Uh, because, you know, the, I, I, they're not, this is not going to be contained in the Arab world. Uh, we're already seeing protests in some of these ten tin pot dictatorships in Africa, these Western-installed leaders there, and uh, we're seeing it play out in Europe. Uh, I, I, I would note that what, what's happening in Tunisia and Algeria, uh, let's not forget that there's large uh, North African populations, in, in, for example, in France, and they see Sarkozy as no different than uh, some of these tin horn dictators that they're chasing out in North Africa. He's, he, he basically was imposed on the French people. And um, I think we're going to see uh, shockwaves go through some of these European countries. Uh, now, as far as the United States, what happened yesterday, that commission that Obama named on the, uh, the Wall Street fiasco came out and said, we're all at fault. Now, I'm not at fault. You're not at fault. Who are they talking about? Well, that's what his State of the Union was about, was this collective guilt, and that if you don't yeah. go along with what the bankers say, you don't believe in America anymore, and that we've got to just sit down and have austerity and accept the carbon tax, green jobs that are going to be everywhere, and, and everything is going to be uh, just fine. Uh, I mean, uh, this is incredible. Well, yeah, and I, I, but I, I don't know, you know, I don't know what it would take for the American people to you know, do what they're doing in Cairo. If the American people think they have a representative government, they're sadly mistaken in that because we saw that play out in the State of the Union where uh, basically you had a meeting, uh, that's a, the annual meeting of the oligarchy, and, and, and they're all sitting there, you know, everything is for public consumption. It's sort of like when the Queen opens up Parliament. It's all pop and, pomp and circumstance. Wayne Madsen, what do you make of uh, the statements by Biden that, that Mubarak is not a dictator? That's like saying if a red cardinal is sitting in the tree outside my backyard that it's not a red cardinal. It's like saying the sun comes up that that big ball of uh, ignited gas isn't, isn't, isn't our sun. Uh, here's the Sydney Morning Herald headline. Revolution is in the air, but U.S. sticks to same old script. Washington appears addicted to propping up tyrants. Uh, you know, A, what's your take on uh, just a week and a half ago, our government saying don't call, you know, even going after Harry Reid uh, when he finally had a Freudian slip and called who a dictator. Now we're being told uh, that, you know, we're not allowed to talk bad about Mubarak, even though he's a horrible, murdering, torturing dictator. We're told he's a great guy. I mean, uh, what does this say about our government, though, that they love dictatorship? That tells us what type of government they want here. Yeah, well, that's because we're a dictatorship. Let's, you know, let's not mince words here. I mean, uh, what we hear every day about police brutality in this country and, and the, the frittering away of more constitutional rights. I mean, and Biden, as far as Biden's concerned, I mean, this guy always allows his, his uh, overactive uh, mouth to um, override his uh, lack of uh, gray matter. Uh, I mean, he's been trying to grow hair plugs for how long now? Well, he needs something. <laughs> That, they, that hair plugs need something to root in, and, and it's hard to grow them when what's underneath is a vacuum. <laughs> uh, Wayne, we're about to go to break, but I wanted to throw this point out. Uh, the New York Times and others are reporting, but it's not getting a lot of attention, uh, that in, in, in uh, many areas of Alexandria and now Cairo, the police will get into an hour-long, two-hour battle, and then they're just joining as the people, you know, chant, you know, you know, be an Egyptian, don't be a traitor, and the police are throwing down their weapons and going and hugging and joining and giving their water uh, and, uh, and and their Gatorade and things to the people. I mean, that looks like shades of '89 in Romania. All right, and uh, there's also reports on Al Jazeera that the military is now coming out and flashing the V sign to the protesters. So I would say Mubarak, if he's not at the airport getting ready to fly, I hope that may happen very soon. And, and you know, the U.S. Has, has trained a lot of these Egyptian military officers, but this may be paybacks as well. You know, we, we trained them. Uh, we brought them over here in some cases for training. 
but they know full well what it's like to be an Arab in the United States. Can you imagine what they've, fa they've faced at the airports, even though they may be traveling with diplomatic passports? Uh, you know, you, you, um, uh, you reap what you sow, and uh, uh, if the military uh, takes part with the people of this revolution, uh, I don't think the military is granted files all that pro-American. By the way, uh, Mubarak's now called out the army. They're machine gunning people on the streets, and that caused the police to now remove their uniforms. They've begun joining. That's confirmed. Egypt is about to fall to the people. Al Arabia, the New York Times, and others are reporting that many of the police are now not just hugging and giving their water, which doesn't sound like a lot here. It's a lot there with the population near starvation. Uh, and now it's confirmed uh, Mubarak has called out the military to uh, start just shooting people. And the same thing happened with Ceausescu. And then now the police and the military are going to start shooting back. Uh, so uh, this happens over and over again throughout history. It's touch and go what's going to happen. Uh, but this is a very explosive situation with the Suez Canal going through that uh, that that region. Uh, but I tell you, uh, Mubarak, uh, it looks like, is in serious danger of being uh, overthrown right now, Wayne Madsen. I would say so. And I think uh, what, uh, what the U.S. Uh, should be also concerned about is, is who's next. Um, We've got to remember that uh, the U.S. has uh, been supporting the Saudi regime for a number of years, mostly over oil. And the eastern province of Saudi Arabia as a majority Shia population, if you see them rise up, their natural ally is Iran. What, what, what is the United States going to do then? Try to try to fight Israel's war in Iran and Saudi Arabia? I mean, I think uh, this also sends a message to Israel that things in their neighborhood are changing. And uh, the Palestinians are also watching what's going on. They know that some of their leaders were uh, from these Palestine papers that were released. Some of their own leaders were willing to give too much away. And remember uh, what happened three and a half years ago in Lebanon uh, in that uh, several-month war. The main uh, you know, armor columns got beaten. The helicopters got beaten by actually trained people that, that were in their uh, anti-tank uh, dugouts and were ready to fight to the death. Uh, I mean, this is a serious situation. Uh, how, how do you see this affecting energy prices? Gold's exploding. I see oil's going up right now. Well, let's let's look at the um, the, the energy countries. Uh, th there's a thought that Algeria may be next. Of course, that's a big supplier of natural gas to the U.S. If Saudi Arabia goes, uh, well, there's there's the price of oil. Uh, I mean, the eastern provinces that's where the oil is. That's where the refineries are. That's where the tankers pull in to load up. So we could see a huge increase in uh, oil prices uh, if this uh, if this. Arab uh, revolt. And we know uh, what the British and the U.S. have done before. If uh, 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 these Arab uprisings take over those ports, uh, I think you're going to see U.S. special forces sent in to try to secure it, and that's going to be an unbelievable uh, bloodbath. Oh, absolutely. If, if, if U.S. special forces, and we don't know whether the, you, you know, the U.S. has a strategic relationship with Egypt. Uh, we don't know if the U.S. is in there giving them uh, advice. And if, it, if, if an American... Special Forces or CIA agent is caught anywhere near uh, advising the Mubarak government, you know, they're going to be hanging from a lamppost in Cairo, Alexandria, or, or Port Said. And that will supercharge the rebellion. Oh, yeah, but what we'll hear in this country is just like this thug uh, that shot these two guys in Pakistan who claims he's a diplomat. It sounds like he's a Blackwater guy. Uh, you know, people around the world getting fed up with these, uh, these overpaid... Uh, uh, people that we send to these other countries, military, civilian, or otherwise, they live like kings. While oh, the army! I mean, I've had army officers on. They are totally sick of them. And all those rumors yeah. we heard five, six, seven years ago about Blackwater are now in federal court. Blackwater on cocaine, running around naked in the streets at night, shooting up people's cars for fun. It turns out that's coming out in federal lawsuits. Well, right, and then we've got we've got this pencil sharpener, General Petraeus, who runs around like he's some sort of American pro uh, you know, uh, saying, uh, you know, who elected him to be anything in Afghanistan or Pakistan or anywhere else? The guy, the, the, the only combat injury he ever had was probably uh, a paper cut. 
All right, stay there, Wayne. We're going to do five more minutes with you, then I'm getting into all the other news. Then we got Larry Pratt on the government moving to take our guns. Yeah, it's been announced. And we got Bob Chapman, Lindsey Williams coming up. Stay with us. Well, Wayne Matson's our guest, formerly with the NSA and, of course, uh, the Navy. Uh, syndicate of columnist, reporter on national security issues. And he's basically concurring with my analysis. I'm seeing a lot of other people claim that the West is behind this. Uh, this does not fit into their overall strategy. Paul Joseph Watson has an article dealing with this at PrisonPlanet.com. Brzezinski feared global awakening has arrived. Monumental worldwide rallying cry for freedom threatens to derail New World Order agenda. This is not just a Muslim thing, as the media is trying to say. Look at these Muslim extremists. These are people starving to death, folks. The IMF, it, 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 you know, the globalists do have something to do with it. It's by ordering these countries to pay more and more on debts, uh, ordering the countries in shock therapy to cut back on their food stamps when close to half the population is on them in Egypt alone, uh, ordering... Uh, you know, the further dollar devaluation, which you see more overseas than domestically, so things cost more for them, because even though they have their own currency, it's based in dollars. Uh, Wayne, in closing, uh, where do you see this headed from your geopolitical research? I mean, how do you see this unfolding? And, and, and do you agree with Watson's article that the global awakening really has arrived? Oh, yes. I, I think there's, uh, you know, the genie's out of the bottle now, and they won't be able to put it back in. I, I think what we're seeing now in Lebanon, you've got a, a government the U.S. doesn't like, but clearly it's a coalition government. It, it also includes Hezbollah, which we don't want to deal with. I, I think uh, based on the Palestine papers, uh, that's only going to increase the popularity of Hamas. Uh, we've got to deal with these. Uh, this is a situation, uh, the real, real politics situation, uh, to, to tr keep calling Hezbollah and Hamas terrorist organizations and acting like they're not there is ridiculous. We're also uh, going to be faced with uh, these new governments uh, uh, in, in Tunisia, which is changing every day. They, they want all the old vestiges of the U.S. and French imposed regime gone. Uh, we may have a new government in Egypt. Uh, we may have a, a South Yemen and North Yemen after the revolution there. We're going to have to deal with the situation as it exists. And if the U.S. wants to start sending special forces into those countries, uh, well, you know what? The body bags are going to keep coming back and they're going to increase in numbers. And uh, that's not, and we don't want to hear from Obama that that's a just war, because if we impose ourselves in these countries, that's not a just war. That's imperialism at its worst. And we get what, we should get what's coming to us. Well, again, when we say get what's coming to us, this isn't our country. We're run by these offshore banks that have created 1.5 quadrillion in derivatives and say that we owe this money. As you said earlier, we don't owe this. On record, we could cut every social program out there, and it wouldn't pay one-tenth of what these bankers say is, is uh, we got to do what Ron Paul said. Just like when an individual goes bankrupt, we've got to uh, write all this, this so-called debt that the bankers have had to sign on to globally, all these foreign bailouts, write it off in the foreign aid, pull our military out of Iraq and Afghanistan, and, and p pull it all in. But the bankers just are telling us with austerity, cut all of our programs here uh, so that even more money can go to them. Yeah, we got to, you know, we, we got to, this defense budget has to be slashed dramatically, too. We don't need 50 bases in Germany. We don't need, you know, uh, a half dozen or more bases in, in uh, Okinawa and, and, and South Korea and these other locations. We can need to bring these bases back. We, we can't afford it. Uh, it's a, it's it, it's just pr prolonging the American hegemon, and this is a failed empire, and we have to understand it's a failed empire, and we have to you know start to start. At, we got to stop acting like we're the you know we're the Roman Empire here. We can't afford it. There's no sense in us having these. What what is it? Uh, 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 seven, all these we have bases in 170 countries, something like that. It's ridiculous. Yeah, there's over 3,000 bases total uh, overseas in 170-plus countries, uh, and it's only expanding. And, again, it's not even our empire. We don't even like the British. Some of the British people actually got spoils from it. Uh, the, we pay for it. We get the bad name. Then they use the hatred worldwide as a reason to set a police state up here. Uh, it's unbelievable. WayneMadsenReport.com, our website's InfoWars.com. There's been some huge developments uh, in Cairo, explosions, gunfire. Wayne Madsen, thanks for joining us. You bet. From Alexandria to Cairo, the police are joining the demonstrators. The military was called out in the last hour. Um, 
We'll see if the military turns on Mubarak. If that happens, it's over. Will U.S. forces be sent in to secure the key oil ports? If that happens, this is edging towards World War III. Funny, Lindsey Williams with his big two oil execs, one died two months ago, uh, the others giving you more intel said, watch for the Middle East for a big blow up. That time has now come. Uh, would the globalists uh, inside trigger, uh, trigger this against their own minions to bring in a crisis? Maybe. Explosions, gunfire heard in Cairo as protesters defy curfew as night fell. President Mubarak has expanded the night curfew nationwide, state TV reports. Uh, Egypt's military deployed on the streets of Cairo to enforce the nighttime curfew. There's incredible videos of them just shooting unarmed people. As thousands of protesters, it's hundreds of thousands, tried to storm the foreign ministry and state TV building in Cairo, the day of rioting and chaos amounted to the biggest uh, challenge ever to the authoritarian president, Hosni Mubarak's 30-year regime. Well, wait a minute. The vice president, uh, Joe Biden, is running around saying he's not a dictator. So if, if Joe Biden says the sky is red and you say it's blue, what do you do? If he says up is down and down is up and black is white, I mean, they told us that Hu Jintao isn't a dictator. And China's got all these stilted trade laws where listen, we're not just competing against all their slave labor. We're competing against uh, all of their uh, internal tariffs that aren't declared but are there to keep our goods out. I mean, this is all just a disgusting, disgusting New World Order operation. And... The populations of Ireland have been rioting. The population of Greece has been rioting. Much of Eastern Europe has been rioting off and on the last six months. And now what's happening there, and our media is saying, look at these Muslim extremists. Are they extremists in Dublin? Are they extremists uh, in Athens? Are they extremists in uh, other areas of the world? I mean, are they all Muslims? No, they're not Muslims. So they're trying to make this a Muslim issue. These people are being raped by the New World Order, and they're tired of a dictator for 30 years. They've had enough. Now, here's a big article that I think is incredibly important. You know, Google has announced they're going to start filtering out alternative news sites. We wrote that article Monday. Drudge Report linked to it on Monday and Tuesday. It got record readership. We've never had an article be read by that many people. Uh, I think this one, uh, 2 million people hit the site to read it. Uh, just that one article, over 2 million. Egypt's Internet kill switch coming to America. I think this article is one of the most important ever. And you hear our media, uh, Associated Press, uh, CBS News the last week going, Obama wants his kill switch. Obama wants his kill switch. The kill switch is already in place. And you saw Egypt flip a switch and the Internet's boom, down. And they already have their own internal government Internet. And that's what Internet 2 and this slow migration towards a censorship uh, taxed Internet driver's license ID controlled web. So I'm going to go ahead and go over this article by Steve Watson. We need to get this out to everybody. And the best place for total coverage that I've seen who up to the minute is adding new articles is DrudgeReport.com. Uh, if you want deep analysis of what's going on, Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com for basic, uh, you know, full spectrum breakdowns of what's happening. Brzezinski's feared global awakening has arrived. Monumental worldwide rallying cry for freedom threatens to derail New World Order agenda. We're going to be going over that report. Uh, but uh, this report, again, also from PrisonPlanet.com, Steve Watson. Egypt's Internet kill switch coming to America. And it's also going up on Infowars.com. In response to widespread protests and mass unrest, the authoritarian Egyptian government has completely shut down the country's access to the Internet, eliminating the use of social networking websites, other effective tools of communication and organization, and effectively sealing Egypt off from the rest of the world. Tunisia has also done that. And, and this is these government grids. This is what cybersecurity admittedly is set up to do. This is the Internet kill switch, and they're getting you ready for it. Internet Intelligence Authority, Renesis, has confirmed that virtually all of Egypt's Internet access are now unreachable worldwide. At 2234 UTC, Greenwich Mean Time, uh, they observed that, uh, 
I guess that's Egypt time, uh, virtually simultaneous withdrawal of all routes to Egyptian networks in the Internet's global routing table. Approximately 3,500 individual BGP routes were withdrawn, leaving no valid paths by which the rest of the world could continue to exchange Internet traffic with Egypt service providers. And why are they doing that? So people can't upload the YouTube videos. In fact, guys, if you just go to Drudge, I think we've got it up as well. Uh, I think I saw it on Prison Planet this morning. Man shot in Egypt. There's a whole bunch of those videos that are still on our YouTube in the U.S., but now people can't upload, so all you're getting is reports of smoke, fire, the army called out, police joining them, uh, the, the police joining the, uh, the demonstrators who are now torching government facilities and, and Western uh, corporate headquarters. I mean, it is bedlam. We just showed you video of a man being shot from about 200 yards uh, by paramilitary police. Not shot with rubber bullets, shot with a high-caliber rifle round. And you can see he's dead on arrival, dead very soon after he was hit. And there are reports that they are just machine-gunning people right now. So, of course, they shut the web off. Uh, they have arrested, and, and, and this is an example of what will happen in the West if they drop the hammer to bring us into the New World Order. If there's riots over starvation, which we're a week away from at any time, I'm saying it's going to happen in a week, I'm saying from the store shelves being emptied, from the welfare cards not working, you know, the digital uh, food cards, the Lone Star cards we have here in Texas. People don't have physical food stamps anymore. They have credit cards. We're a week away from that, according to the Ministry of Defense in England and our own Pentagon studies. Within seven days, complete rioting in Bedlam. Within ten, complete lawlessness and, um, and, and murder just explodes. And within 15 days, near universal cannibalism. Fifteen days in every study in countless countries, they will be roasting humans on spits. I'm not saying that's coming, but that's... Listen, I remember the Washington Post... In 2000, in Argentina, which there was a saying 60, 70, 80 years ago, as rich as an Argentine. On average, in the entire Western Hemisphere, the Argentines were more wealthy than Americans. They were some of the wealthiest people in the world. On average, they had the, one of the biggest middle classes in the world, only rivaled, if you go back 80 years ago, to the breakdowns uh, by Switzerland. Nobody else had more money per capita. Beautiful culture, beautiful architecture, super smart people, and the offshore banks came in and took over. And they imploded their economy again uh, in 2000, 2001. The Washington Post reporter described, and, and, and other media described, similar reports of an 18-wheeler filled with premium uh, Argentinian beef tumped over and middle-class families in disheveled, ripped you know, fancy suits. It was described as, you know, middle class and wealthy families who'd been wealthy just a few weeks before, before the bank shut down, running out with knives, chopping blobs of, uh, of raw beef out of the dead cows and gobbling it. Children, men, women, just bloodily like animals, just gobbling and just slashing with knives. Okay? Now, in the IMF World Bank documents, that were leaked in 2002, they described that as the IMF riot. They actually like that because once they've imploded the economy, then people riot and panic even more for sometimes up to six months. That totally destroys any of the economy, any confidence, stocks, bonds, you name it. And the IMF World Bank can come in and buy everything up for pennies on the dollar. They then on average triple the price of water. They put toll roads on all the existing roads. They triple the price of, of energy, of fuel, of, of electric power. Uh, coal power. This is their program. And they want to do something like that here in the United States. Continuing with this article, we need to get out to everybody. Um, that uh, Egypt has completely shut down their internet. And then Steve Watson breaks down how the similar control grid is being set up uh, here in the United States. The Obama administration, which currently funnels $1.3 in military aid to the Egyptian government per year, uh, refuses to condemn the Mubarak regime. Indeed, Joe Lieberman attempted to justify draconian legislation that would prevent I and mean, provide President Obama with a figurative kill switch to shut down parts of the Internet indefinitely. He cited the communist Chinese system of Internet policing as a model which America should move towards. We have a link to the video of him saying it on Larry King Live a year ago. 
Uh, and he said, right now, China and other governments around the world can disconnect parts of the Internet in case of war. And we need to have that here, too, he said last June. It's about nine months ago. So uh, we've got that situation there. And, and again, this article goes on to break down all the legislation they're pushing. Listen, it doesn't matter if you're liberal, conservative, libertarian, socialist, communist, whatever your political bent is, religious. We better hang together or hang separate. <clears throat> Drudge, in the last three years, has been linking to us routinely. He's accelerated that in the last six months. And he mainly links to our articles about Internet censorship and how it's, it's coming. If we don't hang together, we're going to lose the Internet. And I challenge other media like Rush Limbaugh and Glenn Beck and others who haven't really gotten into this much to come out and boldly state the facts that the federal government's out of control and is illegitimate and is openly moving to put the grid in place to shut the web down and sending up trial balloons on the hour to condition us to accept this. We've got to get hardcore. We've got to stop mincing words. I see all these big mainline media corporations lining up with government, pr promoting Internet censorship, because in, under the new model that Google's announced, they'll be the only ones that are searchable. That's one way they want to start phasing out the freedom of the web. We've got to call a spade a spade and call this what it is, or they're going to get away with it. So other people need to step up like Drudge and start exposing Google and the Pentagon's attack on freedom of speech in this country. While we're busy watching riots engulfing much of Europe and the Middle East, Obama's coming in with gun grabbing. That's coming up with Larry Pratt uh, in the next segment. Then we got Lindsey Williams coming up with Bob Chapman. We're going to have them on together. Bob, the first 30 minutes, last 30 minutes, both of them, getting their response to what's happening in the world economy. I haven't even gotten into that information yet, but it is the big central banks that are causing this. They get you into globalism. They get you dependent on their fiat currency. They get the world for nothing. Then they implode economies. To consolidate power. They want you poor. They want you broke. But they want to do it slowly. The people are resisting it. Now, I wanted to get to this because do you think the Egyptians or the Irish would put up with the police pulling you over to look for, quote, drugs, strip searching you in broad daylight, and then doing a cavity search? Buried in this uh, ABC News piece, they go on to admit, and the police chief admits, yes, it's true, they did a cavity search. You know, the headline is strip search. It should be cavity search. And then buried, oh, they also pulled his underwear off. And Well, I'm not going to, you know what a cavity search is. I mean, they're already taking blood warrantlessly. I mean, it's they're trying to set the precedent that they're God. You're talking on a cell phone in front of Walmart. They call the police saying it's a gun. It's this hysteria. So we're all not trusting each other and only trusting big nanny state government. Let's go ahead and play part of this clip. Uh, here it is, out of Atlanta. I'm Jovita Moore, in for Monica Pearson. Serious accusations against members of the Red Dog Unit during a traffic stop have sparked an internal investigation. Tonight, the Atlanta Police Department is telling us the evidence suggests the officers crossed the line. The line? New at 11, Channel 2's Eric Phillips is live tonight outside police headquarters with this exclusive insight. Eric. Jovita, I am the only reporter to get my hands on documents relative to this case, including this incident report, which tells a very abbreviated and different version of what the victims are calling an outrageous case. And so they reached down your pants? Yes, yes, actually. Brian Kidd was riding with his friend and roommate Sean Venegas last June in downtown Atlanta when the two were pulled over by three APD officers, later identified as part of the Red Dog Unit. They say one of the officers had his gun drawn and proceeded to drag them out of the car and search it against the driver's will. They say they were made to pull down their pants in full view of others, and then they say it got worse from there. One of the officers uh, actually stuck his hand down into Sean Venegas's pants to search to see, you know, in our private areas to see if we had any drugs or anything. Then he says an officer committed what felt like the ultimate violation for his friend, doing a body cavity search. They went to his bottom part. You know, that's just, yeah, I had to look away because, you know, that's my friend. I can't see him getting done like that. Right, that's enough. The two men were riding here along Fulton Street on their way. Uh, and, and they've got the incident report, and I've got the police chief's quote saying, yes, it looks like this happened. Well, I mean, why not? You've got the TSA sticking their hands down the pants. Down the pants. And we first reported on this. We've got men searching little girls. Uh, you've got TSA employees going crazy trying to pick women up, pulling women's shirts off, their bras off. They're settling these lawsuits. They're doing it. The, the cops think they're God. 
the TSA thinks they're God. They do it all because Al-Qaeda hit us or because there's drugs. And on every record, Al-Qaeda's government run. The drugs are shipped in by the government. And then they use it to put us in their prisons if we're dumb enough to use it. I mean, it's in congressional hearings. The CIA ships the schmack and the coke in. Now, the answer to that is don't use it. I mean, it's just incredible, ladies and gentlemen, that we do this in this society. We have more people in prison than anybody else in the world. And now they're moving to try to disarm the American people when the tragedy in Tucson had nothing to do with the guy's politics. And it was somebody with a gun. Folks tackled him, and thank God somebody had a gun there in case they needed to take him out. And they would have taken him out within seconds if he hadn't already been tackled. But And I know a lot of police are good people. I get your letters. I get your emails. I get I don't speed as much as I used to, but I've been pulled over quite a bit by state police and Austin police, and I've been let off almost in every case. And it's probably not even right they're doing it, but they say, Alex, like the show, keep up the good work. I, I know most cops aren't bad people, but they're trying to train you how to be thugs. You're Americans, too, just like the police starting to join people in uh, countries like Greece or in countries like Tunisia or countries like Egypt. I mean, countries like Romania. Just we're not asking you to go out on the streets. We don't want any violence. Just let's stop doing things that are wrong. Let's stop it. I mean, I, I see new articles every day, police caught dealing drugs. Well, what do you think happened when they made alcohol illegal for 10 years? Alcoholism tripled. The uh, organized crime exploded. The politicians became corrupted. The politicians didn't want to get rid of it. They were getting payoffs. They were getting money. It's the same thing here. And then the MTV culture and others promote drugs like they're cool. Let me tell you something, young people. The fact that I want drug decriminalization does not mean that I like drugs. Drugs are destructive. You get natural drugs from climbing a mountain uh, or, or natural drugs from winning a touchdown, playing touch football with your buddies or doing good in business or scoring the date with that girl. I'm high as a kite right now. High as a kite and all I've had is one cup of coffee. I'm high on life. Don't use drugs. All right, Larry Pratt is our guest. We're going to him here in just a moment. Shifting gears out of the riots going on from Europe to the Middle East over the devaluation of the dollar, causing food prices to explode. Roughly half of the Egyptian population on food assistance. They're getting hungry. We're going to be breaking that down and how it's going to affect oil prices, gold prices exploding. We're going to get into White House to push gun control. We knew it was coming. Here it is. And the guy on the Hill with the number one real pro-Second Amendment organization, Larry Pratt. Politico reported uh, the day before the State of the Union, Tuesday, they reported on Monday that Gibbs did say at the press conference, they had the video posted there, that yes, he'll introduce sensible gun control after the Tucson shooting. And then he didn't call for it. People said, oh, you're wrong. See, he's not going to do that. Well, and, and during the campaign, he said it was a conspiracy theory. We're not going to do that. Even though Rahm Emanuel, the chief of staff, gave speeches saying, we want to put you extrajudicially. No judge, no jury, no proof, no appeal. We put you on a no-fly list, over 2 million Americans now on it. Now you're on a no-buy list. And I can't tell you, I know a former NFL football player. I know a former um, UT star football player. I've met so many, I don't know why they're football players, but who are also veterans, no criminal records, who go to buy a gun for their grandson or themselves, and they're sorry, for some reason you can't. They just put something in their military file. Well, this is the move. So they're going to go and, and say, oh, under mental illness with no proof, we're going to say you don't have to have a felony now. You can't buy a gun. We need guns to protect ourselves from the mentally ill. You're not going to stop them from getting guns. They're going to move to ban assault weapons again. And they're announcing they want you to be able to only buy one gun a week. Those are the announcements they made prior to the announcement that the next week and a half he's going to do this. But here's Newsweek, and I want to get Larry Pratt, the head of Gunners of America, gunners.org's take on it. White House to push gun control. Obama intentionally did not mention gun control in the State of the Union. But aides say that in the next two weeks, the administration will unveil a campaign to get Congress to toughen existing laws. Yeah, victim disarmament. 
They go on to say it was intentional, according to the White House, so that they wouldn't energize pro-gun groups. An administration official says Obama didn't mention guns in his speech because of the omnipresent controversy. Yeah, they know that the polls show it's going our direction. Liberals are buying guns. The omnipresent controversy surrounding the Second Amendment and gun control. So they want to do this by stealth. They don't want to make a big deal out of it so we can mobilize. Larry Pratt, tell us from your inside sources on the Hill, am I correct? Because I'm going off what they were talking about before the shooting and after what the Justice Department's pushing. Is that what he's going to be unveiling? You have your finger on the pulse, Alex, as usual. The, um, I, I don't think that the Congress, particularly the House, I'm not even sure of the Senate supporting anything to do with gun control, with the possible exception of trying to expand uh, the already bad uh, law that says if you have a mental health diagnosis, that that uh, if, if you're viewed as uh, you could be dangerous uh, to yourself or others, you lose your gun rights. No due process at all. Uh, we tried to get that repealed and came close last year. Uh, so I, I think we have momentum even there, although that would be the most direct attack that I would expect them to try to make. Uh, barring that, uh, Boehner uh, refreshingly uh, said in the face of Republican Peter King's measure to make uh, a congressman a roving thousand foot gun free zone, said that's not going anywhere. And my guess is that the same would be of Carolyn McCarthy's ban on magazines that hold more than X number of rounds. Um, but what they will try to do is indica indicated by what they've already been doing uh, administratively, unconstitutionally, of course, even illegally. But, for instance, they have uh, banned over 800,000 guns. They were uh, uh, Korean rifles that were to be uh, re-imported into the United States. The Korean army uh, found them to be surplus. Uh, already millions of these, well, at least hundreds of thousands. That was guns anyway. we'd given them in the war, those wonderful uh, M1s, correct? That is correct. It's that M1 carbine. Lots of Americans have those things. Yeah, I got one. And uh, it's, it, yeah, it's kind of a fun thing. And, um, oh, no, no, those might fall into the wrong hands. And, you know, the standard kind of liberal, uh, we don't trust the people argument. Well, that at the last minute, that deal had its permit revoked, and boom. Uh, we're going to have to wait for a pro-American president, I guess, before we can uh, get that taken care of. Hopefully the Koreans will wait long enough. Probably no domestic market big enough to handle it, except the United States. Well, anyway. it's not just that. They're, they're just destroying most of the regular helmets, jackets, clothes. That's why most of the Army navies have shut down the last five years or so, because they're doing everything they can to, to keep any of that out of our hands. Yeah, that's exactly right. They have a lust for destruction. In fact, a part of this was a problem even somewhat under Bush, where they were destroying ordnance uh, that was surplus or brass that... Uh, had yeah, 223, 308. Yeah, exactly. That's why uh, we got an ammo shortage. Um, well, that and, uh, frankly, ammo companies have been working 24-7, and uh, the military has been buying it uh, like crazy. But uh, whatever the case, uh, and that, that has eased somewhat. Um, I think it was a shortage as much as anything inspired by fear of the new president back in 2008. But uh, now you've seen a jump in gun sales in Arizona. 63% spike the week following the shooting of the congresswoman. And we're also seeing a lot of even Democrats now saying they're packing heat. That's good. That's the proper response. And, you know, have have a security detail there packing heat. It's more guns, not less guns, that's going to stop drug addict, devil-worshipping liberals. That's the, the way that we have chosen to, to try to uh, respond to the gun control arguments. Oh, this shows we need more gun control. Well, yeah, if that's the case, then why does England have an increasing violent crime problem with guns? Uh, it's because criminals don't obey the law, so we should be emphasizing, hey, good guys, there were 40 decent Americans standing around the congresswoman when this shooter boy uh, got loose and started shooting people. They have a law in Arizona that's like two other states that says if you want to carry a gun in your pocket your purse openly on your hip do it don't need anybody's permission and yet none of the 40 or so had a gun on them uh, a guy that did carry concealed 
almost was there, but had decided the line was long enough. He'd go to the store and get something, come back. And that's the guy that came running to the sounds of the shots uh, as he was leaving the store. He was the only guy that had a gun. Uh, everybody else uh, apparently just uh, didn't. Well, you know, you're not well, what's the statistics that the FBI admits uh, that for every crime committed with a gun, uh, there's so many other crimes that are stopped with a gun? Yeah, uh, the FBI data are not quite as good as the survey data that have been done by liberals like Dr. Gary Kleck at Florida State University, who find that you're probably talking about four to one crimes committed with guns, uh, a fraction of the number of crimes stopped by guns. Well, I mean, look, it's simple. We got folks with concealed carry here in my office. I'm packing, and it's not, it's there just like a telephone's there, or just like a cup of coffee's there. I mean, it's a tool, and I don't sit here living in fear. Uh, I mean, you know, we advertise the fact that we're not going to roll over, and so people understand that, and, and that's the way to go. I love Sergeant Sam here locally when you know, he's on 590 AM. He points out he's a former police officer. He's sitting right there with a fanny pack on, you know, in the studio. And, uh, you know, they're not worried about it. But uh, You may have seen it. There's a little joke that's been going around on the Internet. And a guy's talking to a cop, and um, the cop had made a road stop. And uh, the guy said, well, I should tell you I have a gun. Uh, or the cop asked him, I'm sorry. And he said, well, yes, I have one on me. And the cop said, well, what is it? And he described the handgun. He said, of course, I also have a rifle there in the back seat. And uh, then in the back I've got uh, whatever else it was. And, and the cop said, well, what are you afraid of? And the guy said, absolutely nothing. <laughs> 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 so that's that's the way, and I think you're right. The numbers have been moving in our direction as far as support for firearms freedom. Uh, Americans are more and more aware uh, that, like those Democrat congressmen, uh, uh, Cohen, for goodness sakes, uh, there's about as liberal a guy and as unpleasant a guy as you can get, and he's come to the conclusion that that he's going to carry a piece. Well, that's, I, that's the most encouraging thing that I've heard of coming out of one of these tragedies. Uh, and it does help to change the discussion that maybe we are going to have to depend on ourselves. But here's what the, I think the socialist mindset really fears. If Americans, even liberals, start to uh, realize that we're, we're in it by ourselves, we're, we're the cops aren't going to be able to be there when, when tr trouble strikes. Once you've made that decision that's so central to your existence that you're going to be responsible for protecting yourself against bad guys, then I, I, for, I don't know if you know Mike Adams, but he writes columns um, on uh, Town Hall. He's a professor. Yes. And he used to be a liberal. And as he and I were doing an interview on one of my shows, I asked him, you know, you got that gun as a liberal when you saw a buddy get murdered. Um, Listening to the rest of your story, it's obvious to me that that was the f opening door to the rest of a change of philosophy. It didn't happen all at once, but once you made that critical decision in such a critical area of your life, you began to see that you had to be responsible, self-responsible. Well, exactly, others. but I don't even call them liberals. I call them domesticated. I've told the story about many years ago. I ke in college, I kept my guns at my parents' house, and I was going to go to the shooting range. And they had a major newspaper editor that's an old family friend down from Dallas. And they were in there having lunch. And he saw me walk out of my parents' bedroom where the gun safe sat, or out of the bedroom closet, walking through the front room. And he saw me with a rifle and a, you know, in a case and, and, a, and, a, and a sidearm. And he got scared like it was a demon or a 100-foot cobra with red eyes. And he got so scared. And I said, look, it's unloaded. It's no big deal. And he was so scared to death. But if you could ever get them to go out, load it, learn safety, shoot it, boom, they're sold. You mm -hmm. get somebody. Mm -hmm. And I've done this with liberals, uh, with, with domesticated, uh, uh, castrated people. They literally grow their huevos back as soon as they fired the weapon. And, 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 and when we had a culture of pure guns, there was much less crime, total safety. But if you did do something unsafe with a gun, people would ostracize you. And, you know, I was trained that way. But, but shifting gears here, uh, uh, Larry, I mean, you all, I mean, you don't like to play up these threats. You like to you know, sensibly look at it. But look, they're announcing a flotilla of gun laws. Mm -hmm. A, what have you heard those are going to be briefly? And then B, they've primed the pump 
that, oh, it's the fault of the guns that this is happening. Right. And what if there's another big event, another big shooting, and, those le and that legislation's introduced? I think this is a grave danger. Well, that is the one thing that maybe could get somebody like Boehner to go wobbly if uh, indeed there were some way for the left to continue the tirade against guns. But right now, it's not working. In fact, there, the, uh, I just heard somebody refer to the left-wing uh, libelers of Palin and the right and all as a, a, a Taliban doing a, an internet, a, a, an electronic stoning. And that, that didn't work this time. The folks didn't buy their message. And so if they're not buying the message that it was that the freedom fighters in the country's fault for having put a target on Gabriel Gifford's uh, uh, district, well, then uh, they're, they're probably not going to support a move for gun control. So as long as we can hold tight in the polls, I think the congressman will probably be okay. But what they will need to do is to hear from people, and I would urge folks to go to gunowners.org, make sure you're getting our legislative bulletins, because when something, even however little a chance, starts moving, we're going to be right on top of it. We'll send out a bulletin, and embedded in there will be an email that you can send to the appropriate Congress critter to say what you like or don't like about whatever sure. that is. So uh, the, the numbers game is still going to count. They need to know that people in their districts are of, of the right opinion, and that will help hold them in place. In closing, Larry Pratt, uh, what do you make of their admission that he didn't want to talk about it openly in the speech so that they wouldn't energize the pro-Second Amendment lobby that is the majority of the American people. I mean, that shows that they're doing something they know is unpopular mm -hmm. uh, right there. It shows they're scallywags. And as long as they can do as much damage as they have been doing through the BATF, why take us on in open combat when they're doing pretty well cutting our throat from behind? Well, that was my next point. What about the ATF just ordering from California to Texas, ordering gun shops to uh, call them when they sell more than one gun. I mean, now they're now they're just like mafia thugs that just tell you what to do with no law behind them. Right. I am hopeful that and I realize Daryl Issa, uh, representative over the uh, oversight committee, that's going to be looking into all this corruption in the Obama regime. He's got a long list of things that need to be attended to. The health care waivers for their buddies. All kinds of stuff. I mean, it's it's so incredibly long a list. And we've been urging, and Representative Paul Brown, who's the head of the Second Amendment Caucus, has been urging ISA, look, we know how long the list is, but would you please put the BATF on top? These guys are actually a danger even to the decent agents who are in the ATF. One of them had infiltrated Hell's Angels and had his cover blown, his home was burned down with his wife and children and happily they got out but this guy's life is in danger because the higher ups are not only are goofballs but they really have no desire to do anything by the book the two agents uh, want to be whistleblowers because of what they saw of the BATF agents themselves running guns into Mexico to run the numbers up. Well, Larry Pratt, thank you so much. It goes back to the ATF being founded out of the revenuers who were the whiskey police who were so corrupt. Abolish the ATF. You agree with that? Absolutely. Gunowners.org. Our website's InfoWars.com. Get the free alerts. Larry, we'll be fighting right beside you. God bless. Thank you very much. We'll be back. Okay, Bob Chapman, uh, formerly with uh, U.S. Intelligence, the biggest private silver and gold broker. Uh, in history, biggest financial newsletter, then retired, came back, routine analyst here every Friday. I was not here for the full show Friday, um, so he wasn't here last Friday. Uh, but he's here with us today for the full hour. Lindsey Williams popping in in the last 30 minutes to give us his take and uh, his intel on the situation in Egypt, Tunisia, Yemen, and spreading to other areas, Greece, Ireland, riots all over the world, uh, to the banker occupation. I keep meaning to salute everyone on the V for Victory campaign we've launched. It goes back to the archers 700 years ago, you know, pulling back their bows so the Norman would cut the Anglo-Saxons' uh, index and middle finger off. Uh, so they couldn't ever be released and get their longbows again and fight back. So they're, so when they were fighting the uh, Norman, they would 
show them their two fingers. That's where the V for victory comes from. We also use it from French and uh, resistance. And that, that campaign, if you looked at Google Analytics, one of the hottest searches without us even really pushing it as that in the last week. Posters going up everywhere. But what we need is not just people making videos of the V symbol. That's great. Or the answer to 1984-1776 contest exposing the Homeland Security takeover. That's separate. We need people to get the V symbols in all legal places, but banner hangs, whatever you can to get local media to cover it, that's when it really goes viral because then the media always tries to attack it and that blows up in their face. Let's see that happen this weekend. And I'm going to talk more about that before the broadcast ends, but so much going on with the economy, so much happening in uh, Egypt right now. Uh, they've cut off the Internet in the last two hours. The police, before they did it, were joining in the rebellion, now they've called the military out. They're reportedly machine gunning people on the streets, explosions, fires all over Cairo and uh, Alexandria. Uh, Egypt uh, spreading all over the Middle East right now. Uh, Bob Chapman, where do you see this going? Nowhere good. Uh, but, you know, uh, we have uh, financed $12 billion a year uh, to Egypt, uh, second largest recipient of uh, foreign aid. And uh, the man's been a dictator for 20 years or however, however yeah, long he's been in there. 29. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you know, things come to an end. Uh, I think that uh, the influence of the United States could be uh, hurt uh, in the Middle East. Uh, in Tunisia, they had another, quote, strong man, so to speak. And uh, he fled. Uh, his wife uh, didn't forget to take the ton and a half of gold with her. And, um, and so uh, it, it's upside down with Yemen and uh, maybe Saudi Arabia is next. That's right. Every time they flee, it's gold that they carry with them. Hmm. Mm, very, very interesting. <laughs> and, you know, somebody made a comment. Uh, uh, why would they take that? They can't eat it. And, you know, it's the same old redundant uh, stupidities. and Because uh, they can buy anything they need with it. Well, that's right. It's idiotic that people we don't get it. We know that, and uh, the dictators know that, too. <laughs> but um, there's, there's a great deal of turmoil. I mean, the, the, the situation is so fluid, it, it's changing every minute, um, at least in Egypt. Uh, I don't know what they're doing in Tunisia right now. And if Egypt England. falls to the population, that's going to supercharge it everywhere else. Oh, I, I think so. It's a very populated country. And um, people get sick and tired of being repressed. Prices go up. Uh, they can't afford to eat. And um, there's great squalor in the country. It's like so many other uh, African countries. And... Um, it's it's going to be a battle for a long time. Bob, stay there. Um, we got to break it down when we come back. I want to go over it all with you. Other areas in the economy. The Davos announcement. They want one hundred trillion. The bankers want one hundred trillion extra. Uh, how much can they leverage that? What does that mean? One hundred trillion more of your tax money. Bob Chapman of the InternationalForecaster dot com is our guest. I'm Alex Jones. Chapman for the rest of the hour, the international forecaster, great financial um, and geopolitical analyst riding shotgun with us. Lindsey Williams called us this morning, said he's got a lot of key information. And he did call it from his two oil company exec sources, now one of them's died of cancer, that looked for the Middle East to have massive turmoil, but then looked to China, that oil prices would be going up, and they magically started going up, uh, and that uh, all this was going to be unfolding. But, but Bob Chapman, the first thing I want to get into before we get into the latest developments with Egypt, and there's been some big new birth certificate developments I'm going to hit with you as well, and that's that we see numbers of 1.5 quadrillion that uh, economists Tarpley and others bring up. Washington Post says 600 trillion is what the derivatives are. The bankers have bought off Western governments to claim that we owe this money when it's their debt, not owed by us. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but if we cut all entitlements worldwide, it wouldn't even pay for a few percentage points of the 1.5 quadrillion. But if we can put this on screen, I didn't warn the guys, but we can try to pull it up. London Telegraph, Associated Press, Davos calls for $100 trillion, uh, in new credit. Uh, Sarkozy calls for $100 trillion. And then under fractional reserve banking, they can loan out 10 times that, so that's $1,000 trillion or $1 quadrillion. 
And Soros is making more statements like I'm having a great crisis like he made last year at Davos. There's the headline. World needs 100 trillion more credit, says World Economic Forum. And what they mean is give them the money back by our tax dollars, and then they loan it back to credit card holders at 25, 30 percent interest, to governments at 10, 20, 30 percent, to corporations. I mean, this is crazy. They create the crisis, offer the solution, give them more power. And it's even admitted mainstream news that the dollar devaluing, driving up commodities, mainly food, upwards of half of the Egyptians and these other Middle Eastern countries being on the equivalent of food stamps, the average, about half of Egyptians make $2 or less. They're starving. You look at these rioters. I mean, they look, some of them look like concentration camp victims. Not, not one of them is, is fat like a lot of Americans or myself, a little overweight. I mean, and the media is spinning it. Oh, they're Muslim radicals on Fox News and CNN. Are they Muslim radicals uh, doing it uh, in uh, Dublin, Ireland or in um, areas of uh, Greece like Athens? No, it's the same problem. So, so break down this demand for 100 trillion more and then how much they're going to leverage that. Well, they've been working on that plan for several months. And most people don't know about it. And the plan is for the whole world. Now, that would be about $10 trillion a year. And they're just going to continue, they think, to inject this money into the world system to keep it from collapsing. And, of course, during that period of time, all of the currencies cont continued to devalue against one another, but more importantly, against gold and silver. That average has been on gold 17 to 18% for 11 years, and... 20 to 21 percent on silver but that's what they intend to do it's just like last may when i called here on the program for qe2 and qe3 everybody was going i don't think so well it turned out that way and i think we're going to get number three and that's part of number three and um hey, i bob i gotta interrupt you said that two weeks ago here it's on record and in your newsletter but explain what qe2 qe3 sdr is for those that don't know well, quantitative easing, it's another a euphemism for explaining the creation of money and credit out of thin air. Uh, the IMF issues SDRs, uh, special drawing rights. They are not backed by anything. It's just another phony baloney currency. And it's not used very widely. They try to implement in 1967, 68, it was a disaster. In fact, gold ran up uh, for the first time in that time period, and the government illegally came in and squashed it. As I found out years later, I didn't know it at the time, but they want to continue to liquefy. And when you liquefy and throw money at the problem, you just get more inflation. Eventually, it leads to hyperinflation and then a collapse and deflationary depression. And that's what they want worldwide. And they think out of this mess that they've created, they're going to be able to force us to accept world government, and it's not going to happen. Well, that's the plan. They've engineered the crisis on record. We have the IMF World Bank documents. They think they're going to finagle a global police state out of the unrest. Food prices go up in the U.S. It hurts. Food prices go up in Egypt, people start starving to death, and you can't just call them Muslim extremists. They're so desperate with their kids starving at home, they're lighting themselves on fire. And uh, no doubt this is already sending oil and gold and food and other commodities up, the unrest. If Egypt falls, and they've, the, 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 as of two hours ago, the police are now joining the crowds in Alexandria and uh, the other major cities like Cairo, and you've got hundreds of millions of people now starting to get involved in this. They called out the military. They're just mowing people down now. That started right as they cut the Internet off over there, showing how fast governments uh, can do this. Headline, Egypt's Internet Kill Switch Coming to America, Infowars.com by, by Steve Watson. I mean, this is really shades of things to come. I don't think it'll be as intensified or as extreme here in the West, but and we're already seeing it in many areas of Europe. Uh, where do you see this going? What's your time frame with this flaring up? And what happens if Egypt does fall to their population? Won't that supercharge rebellions worldwide? Well, it certainly will in Saudi Arabia, which is right next to Egypt. And Libya, I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, but then you go north to Jordan. Jordan's, Jordan's a very pro-British American state uh, with uh, another dummy running it. And I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't spread there as well. And so we're looking at changes. 
And I, I, you know, from what I've gleaned thus far, uh, this is not some radical movement. These people are hungry. And I think it's as simple as that. Empty stomachs make for rebellion. Certainly didn't 89. Would, look, look, how many years have we talked about Ceausescu? My film, Obama Deception, Fall the Republic. Obama deception made almost two years ago, folks. Get it. Because it's more powerful now. People see it and they go, how did all these guests and an economist and, and sociologists that Alex interviewed, how did they predict this? Because we know what dollar devaluation, when it's the world reserve currency, does. We know what the Defense Department and Ministry of Defense in England have been gearing up for. They believe they're going to bring in this crisis and ride it till Valhalla. I think they're riding it right over the edge uh, of a uh, cliff, but I mean, Bob, you didn't say this two weeks ago. You've been saying it every week for years and years and years, probably seven, eight years on this show that we were coming towards this. I had, you know, economists like George Humphrey uh, here and, uh, when they got rid of Glass Steagall. I had you on then saying the same thing. I mean, we know it's like you shoot somebody in the head with a 45, you know, it's going to probably kill them. I mean, it's not like we're rocket scientists to know what's happening. And it's, it's, it's just so amazing to see this turmoil accelerating. Well, I, I think you, your, your uh, commentary is excellent. And, and the reason why is it's all there for anybody to read in almost the same way history repeats itself because it's the same gang of criminals that are doing the same thing over and over and over again. And most people don't catch on because they're not educated or ill-educated and even people within the professional ranks. And many of them can't argue because if they do, they lose their jobs, like economists for major corporations, et cetera, or analysts. So they got to keep their mouth shut. It's only people like you and I and a handful of others get up there and say, no, no, the dog is white, not black. Come on, get with it. Well, we're watching a live stream feed uh They've shut the Internet off in the country, but Al Jazeera's got a satellite connection, and we see the police live fleeing and being routed, uh, and the feed just cut uh, by the Egyptian people. And again, uh, the reports are they've got the military now firing on everybody. I don't know. They say that's a well, live stream, but I don't know how it could be because it's dark there now. Sorry, Bob. Go ahead. You know, Alex, Alex that's going to end very badly because the military can in no way control those people i mean there's millions of them you know they throw enough rocks you're going to knock the guy down whether he's got a helmet and a, and a vest on and then you take his weapon and then then things really get hot and i think that's going to happen now, this thing is full blown well right now we're watching footage uh of just the police completely being rounded and fleeing uh, and they're repeating the footage. Uh, so this was uh, obviously had to be earlier, even if Al Jazeera says live. Uh, but uh, just absolutely incredible. And they've called the military out. Uh, I guess it rests on the military. A, are they going to be able to suppress the people? B, will they uh, join the people? C, will the military side with the dictator but then be defeated? Well, I think they've already sided with the dictator who's luxuriating in London. And uh, I, I think they're going to lose. Yeah, what does they're that right, say? No, no, so no, that's confirmed that he has years. fled? It is confirmed that Haji Mubarak did flee yesterday? No, I've read that in several reports. Yeah. Well, well. And, yeah. you know, usually when that happens, they don't go back. Guys, let's uh, double check on that. going to lose. Let's double check because the media is reporting he fled to London. But uh, let's search Haji Mubarak in London. Let's, let's see if we can absolutely nail that down. He, he's hiding out. We know that. So in your gut, do you think Egypt's going to fall? Well, I think they're going to have a change of government, and I, I think it's healthy. And I don't think it's being run by extremists. They're, these people are hungry. And the same thing happened in Tunisia. I've, I've been in all these countries. And, uh, you know, the poverty is terrible. I mean, that includes in Morocco and Algeria. And, um, and, you know, you go south, it's just as bad. Nigeria, I mean, it's... One big bingy ditch. Those are the ditches that run along the streets where people relieve themselves. And uh, there's some things Americans just don't know go on in this world. 
Uh, we've got uh, several publications we've been putting up on screen. Uh, the big Israeli newspapers, Israeli National News, is reporting that Mubarak's wife and son have fled to London amid protest. Um, we've got other reports that he's fled as well. And, uh, yeah, if he's fled, that's pretty much a shoe in that it's going to be a change in government. The question is, what will it be? Uh, we're going to ask Bob if he thinks there's any way this could be Western intelligence behind this, as some people uh, are saying. Wayne Madsen concurs with us and thinks this is organic due to food prices. It just shows how out of touch with reality the corrupt political ruling class is here in the United States that they would chastise senators for calling Hu Jintao a dictator two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, that Joe Biden, the vice president, would say that in press releases and statements that Hazi Mubarak's on a dictator. Here's CBS News. Um, we've also got the Examiner reporting on this. Hazi Mubarak's not been seen in two days. It's confirmed that four days ago his wife and son fled. It says the son was his successor to be the leader, just like North Korea. I mean, they're not just dictators, they're kids become dictators. Why not put a gold crown on these people in our filthy government 12 plus million on record a year, second biggest recipient of aid, props them up. In the world, I've got the headlines, I read them earlier, saying, why are you propping up dictators? This is why the Muslims are mad at us. We fund dictators in their country that torture people to death. Okay? It's wrong. And uh, Bob Chapman, you know, if the Republicans don't deliver on reversing the New World Order, there's going to be serious resistance here in this country. People are figuring out this two-party political class dictatorship as well. Well, I think you're right. And there are some that we know will try to make changes. Can we get enough? I don't know. Um, if I had to guess, I'd say no. Uh, we didn't gain enough. 14% instead of 6%. We would have liked to have gotten 50% of the incumbents kicked out. Uh, the American public, generally speaking, hasn't gotten it yet. Yes, we're changing hearts and minds all over the world, but we've got to do it faster. Well, look at Rahm Emanuel. There's no doubt that that guy wouldn't win if they didn't have classic, famous election fraud, you know, even with Kennedy in Chicago. And now the Supreme Court said, yeah, you can go ahead and be on the ballot. And, uh, you know, they're putting their mafia people in everywhere. Uh, they're organized crime leaders, but... Uh, I mean, again, it's just so arrogant. They have gotten to the point where they don't think anybody's going to do about, do anything about it. And if there's any indication of what we're seeing worldwide, uh, the next step will be, and for some event, <clears throat> and we don't know what the event will be yet, it's going to happen, and for the strangest set of circumstances, people are going to start demonstrating, and these goons who run around in these dark uniforms with their M16s, uh, they are in turn going to start beating people around, and that'll do it. Have you heard the latest? Out. Have you heard the latest? They're doing warrantless checkpoints. Uh, this is confirmed in Atlanta, and police are actually doing cavity searches now. That's unbelievable. Let me ask you I this: mean, you know, you know, in other countries of the world, they do have checkpoints. I mean, you take Mexico as an example. They have them, but no one's feeling you up. You know, they just check your car and they go through it, and that's the end of it. Let me briefly bring this up. We're going to come back and briefly get into the birth certificate, and then we're going to have uh, Lindsey Williams on with you. This week, uh, we got in the mail to our address, uh, address to Alex Jones, ROM for Mayor, and it came to our address with a letter thanking me for my support. I've not been supportive of Rahm Emanuel the gun-grabbing creature, uh, the ear gun, you know, you know, son of terrorist. Uh, this is a guy famous for mailing dead fish to people as a, as a threat and, 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 and threatening people. Do you think this is a joke from inside his campaign or some type of veiled threat or a tweak of the nose saying, doesn't matter what you do, we've got the election fixed? Well, it could be any of the above. Um, I, I, I don't know how to read that one because uh, you've named the... Uh, Distinct possibilities. And, co of course, you're a general target anyway, and so you get that kind of thing. But Emmanuel is uh, at the bottom of the barrel. Um, uh, you know, the, the guy is despicable. And uh, they'll probably steal the election, and that's the arrogance 
that you uh, referred to uh, within society. It, it's not only in Washington, it's in state politics, state business. And, uh, you know, look, look at Texas. Uh, they told them not to build the roads. They're going to try to build them anyway. They don't care. It all depends on how much money they get paid. They don't look at the end result. They don't look down the road and see their grandchildren and slaves. Here in Texas, in the legislature, we voted down turning 8,000 miles of roads into toll roads. But every time we beat them, they just come back and push them again. I mean, it's, it's just it's completely naked tyranny. Political zombieism. Yeah, they just march forward uh, like the undead, no matter what you do. Stay there. I want to get into a host of issues. Briefly, big developments on the birth certificate issue. In fact, I'll start telling you now. The Hawaiian director of health was basically told to look at releasing it, and he just resigned. <laughs> We're going to talk about that. Friday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're here live. A lot of days we go into overdrive into the fourth hour. Back Sundays for two hours, 4 to 6 p.m., all times central. Been so busy today, I haven't had a chance to get into the History Channel Secret Society special that was very well done, but overall a whitewash. Uh, and I'll have to comment on that Sunday uh, just because we don't have time to get into it uh, now. Uh, but they treated me pretty well in it and uh, tried to show both sides. But overall, it was quite a whitewash. Uh, so we're going to be discussing that. But it was incredible to see that on national television dealing with the Bohemian Grove. If you want to really see the truth about Bohemian Grove, the film, it's two films on one DVD, Dark Secrets Inside Bohemian Grove. And then that's a two-hour film. And then the 46-minute special, The Order of Death, uh, that has all the latest infiltrations and information in it, available at Infowars.com. Bob Chapman, of course, is our guest. Briefly, Hawaiian Governor Abercrombie's health director quits. CBS News interim health director Dr. Neil Palafix abruptly quit Wednesday, the first of the new governor Abercrombie's cabinet appointees to leave. And Bill introduced in Hawaii state legislature would allow anyone to get a copy of Obama's birth records for $100. And we had the good longtime friend of the governor when he was a congressman, a big reporter, come out and say, oh, I talked to him. It's all true. They can't find the certificate which the governor already told the newspaper a week and a half ago. Uh, and now uh, they are uh, freaking out. I mean, there's something going on. Briefly, and I want to get uh, separately uh, Lindsey Williams' take on this, then we'll get back into the world economy in the Middle East that Lindsey Williams' oil exec uh, friends told him look for in the next few months, and here we are, major unrest. He was right, which points towards it being an operation of some type. Maybe they knew their policies would cause this of dollar devaluation, increasing uh, food prices and uh, energy prices. But uh, what's briefly your take on this whole birth certificate situation, Bob Chapman? Well, I think they made a mistake. Uh, they said they had the certificate and they didn't. It probably doesn't exist. They probably figured they could bluff their way through it and they couldn't. Um, I think the big question is uh, now or after uh, the, uh, the Obama administration, if it is found that he is in fact an illegal alien, uh, are they going to be able to nullify all of the things he's done since he's been in the White House? Let's get Lindsey Williams. Pastor Williams, of course, uh, 30 years ago, worked with the uh, heads of s several major oil companies as their official chaplain in the board meetings and exposed with his bestseller, The Energy Non-Crisis book, that they have more oil than Saudi Arabia on tap uh, in just several fields uh, in Alaska. And then over the years, uh, we've now been able to release the oil exec, the head of operations for Atlantic Richfield. The other one was an actual CEO of another big company. We haven't released his name, but the other fellow, uh, of course, uh, was a Mr. Fromm, died in December of cancer and told uh, Lindsay what was going to be coming up in the future, the, in, everything that's now happening. The other oil exec mirroring what he's told him. Uh, Lindsay, if you want to comment on the birth certificate, that's fine, but in limited time, you called it here three months ago, and then again a month ago. You said the Middle East, uh, the crisis is on over there. Look for the Suez Canal to get shut down. I remember you saying that from your sources. Uh, then you said look to China after that. You talked about oil. You said the next six months we'll go to 150. Then after that, maybe even 200. We'll get Bob's take on this as well. Uh, but from everything you've been told, uh, you say it ties into that from your sources. Break it down for us. 
when I woke up this morning and heard the crisis in Egypt and that it had spread to Jordan and Yemen, my mind went right back to what had been predicted on your program four months ago. I had been told by the elitist of the world and prior to Mr. Fromm's passing away, he had told me that they were going to have a crisis or wanted a crisis in the Middle East. And here we are exactly, Alex, four months later, just as this gentleman told me, with a crisis now developing in Egypt and Jordan and Yemen and the Suez Canal. 30% of the world's oil travels through that canal on any given day. If this spills over into the Suez, we will have 4 to $5 a gallon gasoline at the gas pump overnight. And, Alex, every bit of this, and I say this by the providence of God, because there's no way in the world that I, as a little ordinary everyday guy, could have ever known any of this had it not been told me by the elitist of the world and, of course, by Mr. Fromm before he passed away. And, Bob Chapman, I'm so glad you were on the program today because I remember so well back two and a half years ago. It was on a Friday, just like this, and you and I were on Alex's program together. And I had warned Alex that I had something so bizarre that it would shake the world. And he allowed me, and I risked my reputation, and came on the program, and you were right there, Bob, and remarked about it. And I said, I've just been told by this elitist friend, now we know who his name is, which is Ken Fromm, and I said, he just told me that the price of crude oil is going from $147 a barrel to $50 a barrel. And I remember, Bob, that you remarked, my goodness, I don't know how this can possibly happen. And I wondered myself if I wasn't crazy, but I said it, and exactly... Three months later, Alex, just as this gentleman had told me, Mr. Fromm, it took place. In fact, it went to $34 a barrel. And he said at the same time, he said the price of crude oil is going to stay between $50 and $70 a barrel for two and one half years. Now, Alex, I I, got to go back to this because of the fact that if everything he said has happened in the past has happened, then everything he says is going to happen in the future is going to happen, too. And I'm going to enumerate all of them for you as fast as I can possibly talk it here. And he said two and one-half years, crude oil will stay there. And it did, Alex, almost to the month, two and a half years, crude oil has stayed where he said it was going to stay. And then I came on your program a few weeks ago, and I said, it's over. The price of crude oil is going back up to 150 to $200 a barrel. Folks, mark my words. I was told by Mr. Fromm before he passed away where it was going. You are going to see it go back there. If this Suez Canal has a conflict in relation, if this spills over from Egypt to the Suez Canal, we could see that 4 to $5 a gallon gasoline basically overnight. But there's more to it than this, because not only did he say two and a half years, but Alex, four months ago, I was told by the elite that there is going to be a crisis in the Middle East. He did not say a war with Iran. And you remember my exact words. In fact, I punctuated them because I had to say it just like they said it. There is going to be a crisis in the Middle East. And I've been sitting back wondering every day when it would pop up and where it would start. And I woke up this morning and heard that it had happened in Egypt and Jordan spilling over into Yemen that Mubarak's son had fled the country of Egypt. And Alex, exactly like this man said it was going to happen, it has happened. Okay, it now let's go on. back, though, and then I want to get Bob's... On your program. Let's go back, and I want to get Bob Chapman's take on all this and his comment, but specifically more of what he told you about the Middle East, because I'm going from memory... Uh, back in October and November and December, but I remember you talking about Suez Canal, unrest, Iran's back on the burner. Uh, but 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 that would mean that the globalists had implemented this in some way. Why would they? Why would they want this? Uh, uh, I mean, specifically, what did he say, and, and what did the other Mister X say, Lindsay? all the riots that are taking place and how it was all brought about by the monetary crisis that's happening over there. The CIA's hand is all over this. And remember, 
I've tried my best to say this to your audience as many times as I can. There positively is a group of people on the face of the earth who control the world. They tell the president what to do. They dictate to Congress what bills to pass. Everything you have ever said over your program, Alex, about these people, I've verified it by actually having lived with them for three years, and now we're seeing it take place right in front of our eyes. Bob Chapman, your take on this or questions for Lindsay? Well, before he, <clears throat> Lindsay, <clears throat> said the last uh, minute or two, uh, my question was going to be, well, uh, did they predict that this was going to happen uh, because of uh, financial reasons or uh, the, uh, the price of uh, food uh, and, and sending starvation, we'll call it. But now Lindsay said that uh, the actions that you're seeing, I guess, in Tunisia as well as Egypt, had been planned that way. Is that right, Lindsay? That is correct. I was told this, and I came on Alex Jones' show. And, you know, okay, let me go back a ways. Alex, you remember back about two years ago, we had all of our forces over there right ready to, uh, around Iran, the Navy, Army. And you said Army. they're not going to attack, and, but, yeah. Yeah, and we were all saying we were ready for a crisis in Iran. And I said, I went to Mr. Fromm. And I said, oh, we're going to have a crisis with Iran. Now, this was two years ago. And you remember saying, I said this on your program, Alex, and Mr. Fromm just laughed on the, radio, on, on the phone, and he said, no, Chaplain, we are not going to have a crisis with Iran for two and a half years. And then uh, I remember that Dr. Stan called me back about six months ago and said, Lindsay, it looks like we're fixing to have a crisis with Iran. And I went to my elitist friends, and they said, no, it's not time yet. And then I came on your show four months ago, and I said, I have just been told that they have said we want a crisis in the Middle East. Alex, that's exactly No, you did say that. Going. It's on record. So, so, uh, but, but all I'm saying is, obviously, they know if the IMF orders Egypt and Tunisia and others to cut the food stamp, and the people are on two dollars a day on average, or half the population's at two dollars or below. That 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 they know it's going to cause that crisis. But my question is, why would they want rebellion all over the Arab world uh, with more pro-Muslim, uh, you, you know, type uh, groups that are seen as extremists coming to power? Is that a problem, reaction, solution? I mean, specifically. They wanted this crisis right now in order to distract attention away from many things that are going on. And you'll remember also that I said on your show about three months ago after I had talked with this other gentleman who gives me information, he had said, Chaplin, don't pay any attention to what happens in North and South Korea. Don't pay any attention to this crisis in the Middle East. He said it is only a method of distracting people's attention away from some main issues. And so that was the reason this is taking place over there right now. They created it. Okay, Bob Chapman, uh, what's your take on what Lindsay's... I think Alex, too, the natural recipient of all of these problems is going to be Israel. How is that? Well, I think they'll benefit from it uh, by having chaos to semi-chaos. Because they'll be the only base countries. left. They'll be the only base of Egypt and all these other uh, places fall uh, and if Jordan falls, which could happen, or Saudi Arabia, wow, you, I mean, that would be a big crisis. You think Israel wants to gamble that big? You know, I don't think uh, they directly have anything to do with it, or at least I, I don't know that. But I, what I do know is w no matter who caused it, whether it was delivered by the CIA or whether it was natural, it's bad for them, and it's really good for Israel. There's no question. Just the facts. I mean, if you get turmoil in the other places that these people don't like you, well, that's good. They won't be bothering you. Amazing. Lindsay, your take on that angle. The only thing I know is, Alex, I was told four months ago, and I came on your program and said it, they want a crisis in the Middle East. Now, Bob Chapman, you would know much more being the insider that you are, as to why they would want it and what their benefit would be. All I knew was that they were going to have it, and if this man was right about these things in the past, please, I beg of you, I plead with you, I cry out on this program and beg of you to listen to me. If this man was right on all of these other things almost to the day, 
the oil price is going from 147 to 50, actually went down to 34. Two and one half years before the price will start up again. It started up exactly two and a half years later. The crisis in the Middle East, they said, in four months. Now, if all of that took place exactly as the elite have it planned behind closed doors, and Mr. Fromm told me before he passed away, please listen to what's going to happen now. He said... The dollar will be dead by the end of 2012. Now, if you have, have, if you don't want to pay attention to me or you don't want to listen to Mr. Brown before he passed away, just read what Richard Russell wrote this past week. He's the, he's a lion of Wall Street and newsletter writers. He said everything that Mr. Fromm has told me for the past two years. Again, I was told there's not going to be any shortage of food on the grocery store shelves, but you probably will go hungry because you won't have the money to be able to buy it. Folks, please, I beg of you to listen to this for the sake of your dinner table. Again, he said, if it's written on a piece of paper, it's worth the paper it's written on. And so my friends called me in the past week, and they said, oh, chaplain, you were wrong. The price of gold is going down now, and price of silver is going down. I think we better sell. I said, don't do it. I said, please, don't do it. But, if, said, uh, Lindsay, if you look at the 11- or 10-year graph, it's going straight up. They always have these manipulations down. Uh, overall, uh, I, I know who the other living executive is, former CEO of a big three, oil company even more high-powered than Ken Fromm, head of operations for Atlantic Richfield, who you on record worked with for many years. Um, uh, just all very, very bizarre, but we can see where this is all going. What's your view, just analyzing all the economic data? Where do you see the dollar at the end of 2012, uh, Bob Chapman? Well, if it's against other currencies, um, first of all, I think that there's a good chance that Ireland, in the election that's coming up next month, will get rid of the party that they've got. And the party that's coming in, they don't like the banks at all. Uh, many of them are ex-IRA people, and uh, I think they probably will renege. They will uh, default on their debt, and I think they should, quite frankly. Which is admitted. It's not their debt. It, 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 I mean, that's admitted. Right. It belongs to the people who own the banks. That happens to be the Queen of England, the Queen of Holland, the Rothschilds, etc. And if that happens, you'll drop out of the, of the euro, and to go back to the punt, uh, they'll leave the Eurozone, might even leave the EU. And that could start the ball rolling with Greece, with rioting, saying, no, we're not going to do that. Uh, we want to follow Ireland. And then, and then behind that, you might have Portugal and, uh, and, Bel uh, and Belgium and maybe uh, Spain and Italy as well. And that'll kill and the so, euro. How will that affect the dollar? Uh, in killing the, the euro it'll make the dollar go back up again. But what you really have to weigh the dollar against is not other currencies. This USDX is a distraction. You, gotta, you, you have to weigh them versus gold and silver. And for 11 years, gold has gone up against every currency about 17 to 18%. And, and against silver versus the currencies around 20 to 21 percent. And that's the real guidepost, the real mark, not currency to currency. Same thing but with I oil. Think... Oil overall is going way up. And I want to come back and talk to both of you about what $150 barrel oil will do to this economy and the world economy. On the other side with Bob Chapman and Lindsey Williams, we'll go about five minutes into overdrive that both of you can do that, maybe even a little bit more. Today, our websites are prisonplanet.tv and infowars.com. Stay with us. If you want to get uh, either a digital copy or a hard copy, a free copy, introductory of the latest issue of the International Forecaster, you can simply call 800 686 2237 Midas Resources, the sister company of this network. Excellent information. 800 686 2237. And uh, it, it's such a mind control game. We're going to go five minutes in overdrive with both our guests, bare minimum. It's such a mind control game to sit there and go, oh, look, gold went down the last two weeks. And they use people's short attention span. It went down a little bit. You put the 10-year graph, 11-year graph, it's going straight up with little blips down like steps going up. 
I mean, it's just ridiculous. It, it, it barely goes down and then goes up. It, it's manipulation. I mean, I only promote what I believe in, and I believe silver and gold is only going up because of global devaluation. We're going to go back to Lindsey Williams, but I wanted to throw out there, he's made several DVDs and two new audio CDs, breaking down all these predictions. They've got the old DVDs that are just as important because it's the same info now. And I'd say what Mr. Fromm and the other oil exec told him, are about 97% accurate. And it's really been stunning. 800 uh, 686 237 if you want to call and uh, get a free international forecaster. Uh, and uh, you can go to uh, prophecyclub.com uh, to check out all the Lindsey Williams uh, information or 888 799 6111. And I'll give that out again before he leaves us. Uh, look, Lindsey, looking at this, well, I want to ha ha have Bob uh, basically ask the question Bob, do you? think there's a lot of validity. I mean, obviously, most of this stuff's come true, that we could see $150 a barrel oil. And what would that do to our economy if that happened and went for a long, sustained time? Well, first of all, uh, we're seeing the genesis of it right now. And, and you know, Suez was half burning. Uh, the military there have been shooting people for three days. And it, it, Cairo is, is wild, but it's nothing like Suez. And so maybe this is the event that will start to bring oil prices higher. But it looks maybe, organic. Maybe it the looks organic. Will be in chaos for weeks. Uh, absolutely, and, and and I am reading here: violence escalates in Egypt as protesters torch ruling party headquarters in Cairo. It says they've routed the police and are burning buildings all over Suez. Uh, and I remember four months ago, three months ago, a month ago, Lindsay saying, watch the Middle East. It's going to blow up. It, it, watch the Suez Canal. Did your sources tell you anything else when they said Suez Canal, Lindsay? Yes, they very definitely said there was going to be a crisis in the Middle East. They were very firm about the fact that they wanted a crisis in the Middle East. They said that the price of gasoline at the gas pump was going to 4 to $5 a gallon. I'm warning you. Folks, I plead with you, gold and silver prices are only going to go in one direction. They said if it's worth, if it's written on a piece of paper, it's worth the paper it's written on. They said our currency is gold and silver. It's the only thing you can maintain your purchasing power with. And folks, even though you've seen a little back set in gold and silver prices recently, it doesn't mean one thing. The price is going back up drastically. You have not even seen the beginning of the Well, it shot up by $40 today and silver by a dollar. Uh, we're going to go to break, come back, and pretty much give you, you most the floor with a few comments from Bob, who we appreciate joining us the next five minutes. But, Bob, where do you see gold going? Well, endlessly higher. And uh, nobody knows how far. It could be six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000, but... Uh, I think a shot for this year for 2000 or 2400 is a good one. Uh, we're looking at gold up $20 right now. We're looking at oil up 370 which bears out what Lindsay's talking about. I mean, this turmoil could go on for weeks or months. I mean, there could be a civil war in the country. Uh, would the canal be shut down? Maybe. If it is, what Lindsay has had to say about 147 150 oil, that's doable. That's right. Yeah, Ted earlier said it had shot up almost 40, but it shot up 30 and has down, dropped down to 22 up. Uh, we'll be right back in 60 seconds. Stay with us. Transmission will continue. Okay, we're into overdrive right now. Uh, up on the Drudge Report, they have a live feed from Al Jazeera. We're going to add that to Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. And throughout the weekend, we'll have continued updates and coverage. We're doing some upgrades to the site and other things this weekend anyway, so we're going to be a lot of us here over the weekend wonderful crew couldn't do it without them and you the listeners your support bob chapman joins us every friday lindsey williams i'll definitely have you back up if you can do it next week for a full hour to take calls people want to talk to you uh but uh bob chapman you were just and i want to get lindsey's take on this you were just talking about revolution or, or insurrection in this country uh, why do you say that well, I think that as we had this deterioration, uh, let's say that uh, uh, gasoline goes to four fifty a gallon. Um, the bill for the United States uh, at four fifty a gallon, uh, or we'll project one hundred and twenty dollar oil would do that. Uh, you're looking at uh, something on the order of two hundred and fifty billion dollars in increased costs that'll have to be devoted to 
paying for the oil as well as the increased prices for food. And then, you know, oil may be shut off from time to time as well. And so the cost of doing things is going to go up. You get over 22% unemployment. I hate to interrupt you. We're watching live streams from Al Jazeera, linking it up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com and betting it right now. Al Jazeera, there are tanks running around. Uh, They just cut from the live stream. People being shot. Uh, I mean, this is total bedlam, and the military has been able in 77 and before that to put down insurrections. Do you think they're going to be successful this time, or will they join the people, Bob? I don't know about joining the people, but I don't think they're going to be successful. All right, let's... I, I think the, the people have had it, and they're, they're, they're going to go for it. they got them outnumbered 100 to 1. Uh, Lindsey Williams, what's your take on what Bob was just saying about... Uh, and the media can tell us the economy is great here, but all the statistics show we're going into a depression. Increased oil prices, when they had them a few years ago, a lot of people couldn't go to work who were on fixed incomes. I mean, uh, what's the elite's take that you talk to on, on insurrection in the U.S.? The elite positively made it plain to me, and I said it on your program four months ago, that what you're seeing in front of your eyes right now, what you just reported a moment ago, was going to take place within four to five months, and it's happening almost to the day. What's going to happen in the United States of America? Well, let me tell you what's going to happen. It's very plain to see. Suppose the grocery store shelves are full, but the dollar has collapsed to the point that people are going hungry. Now, Alex, common sense tells you what the what the mindset of the people... You know, I'm 75 years of age, but... When I was a boy, you wouldn't have had people looting grocery stores. Uh, you wouldn't have had mass bedlam in this country where you had to get your firearms out. Today, with the mindset of the average young person, Lord have mercy on us uh, when this does happen and people can't, are going hungry out there. Uh, I think it stands to reason what's going to take place. Just common sense would tell you the elite have not said to me that there was going to be rioting in the streets in America. But they told me everything that was going to take place before Mr. Fromm died. He told me everything that they were going to do and the results of what they said they were going to do is chaos and bedlam, uh, Alex. Well, now is the time to get the word out, as Ron Paul has said, that the bankers have engineered this. Don't let them use the crisis to get even more power, as Bob said earlier in the hour, to establish uh, world government. Uh, And, gentlemen, I want to thank you both for joining us. I look forward to talking to you both uh, for a full hour each. Uh, next week and uh, in fact we'll probably put Lindsay and Bob well Bob we know will be back next Friday but we're going to get put Lindsay on hold and set him up uh, for- Alex may I urge your people all of your listeners please hear the voices of the elite I have never done this before until after Mr. Brom died you actually hear the voices of the elite themselves absolutely you've got that uh, there do. at the prophecy club.com but we're just out of time uh, Lindsay we'll talk to you again soon and uh, Bob Chapman we'll talk to you again soon Bob thanks for joining us okay bye bye all right take care there goes Bob Chapman uh, and Lindsay Williams will talk to Lindsay right here as we go into break we'll cover a lot of key information coming up straight ahead in the retransmission at infowars.com on your local AM and FM stations Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. (laughs) 